Hail and well met. I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you one and all to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeon and Dragons experience broadcast presented by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here to witness our playthrough of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Joining us as always, we have Typhon the Wizard, Rim the Ranger, Persephone the Bard, Falkron the Cleric, Jax the Rogue, and Silas the Paladin Fighter. Any announcements from Lawful Stupid? Well, it was already up there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you might want to check something, Jade. With the, the Rico says he's not hearing you. Apparently, oh, he's it might hearing be everybody your... else. Mm. It's your fancy. He audio. wasn't saying you anything important. You can hear me now, though. Yeah. Right, okay. There's the chat. Right. Sorry. Start again. Um, yeah. Just a reminder that we are sponsored <laughs> by StartPlaying.Games. Um, if you want to play with people like Sean here. Um, or Rico, and we've got Panda aboard as well. If you want to play with these as your DMs, then please um, click on the links above and start joining their games. It does support them as content creators, and also on top of that, it does help support us as the sponsee as well. So, um, you know, if you like what you see here as Sean, um, with Sean as your DM, then please go and hit him up. On top of that, we are trying in a new system um, where you can shout out with bits is it shout out i don't know i'm too old for that uh, you can reward bits and we then um reward the players or the dm with either inspiration a d6 a d20 inspiration healing potions etc etc um, that was so game changing it was yeah missed opportunities <laughs> it went crazy everyone was getting inspiration, oh, yeah. like, inspiration for was... everybody yeah oh, it was awesome. <laughs> um it doesn't appear to be breaking the system so if it did and the players are still happy with it we're just going to carry on um jay's Especially muted poor lee couldn't get one to save his life am i i'm not oh. still muted i know i'm not muted now um so yeah if you guys um want to help support with um like the bits and stuff um i will wait until it's an appropriate time to cut in so i'm not going to like cut over sean when he's deep in monologue um i would wait for the right moment and say by the way blah 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 donated 300 bits um everyone gets to roll a d20 and we one of the whoever wins gets a d6 inspiration um and that includes the dm the dm can roll for that as well so yeah uh, apart from that i think that's it all righty Thank you, Jade. Think From else. the DM's chair, two announcements tonight. Uh, first, just a friendly reminder that thanks to the skill and patience of our half-elven friend, there are past sessions of our game available to watch on the Lawful Stupid YouTube page. Go watch, enjoy, like, subscribe, all of those wonderful things that help us out so very, very much. Secondly, while the world of D&D does contain monstrous races that are driven by dark gods and beliefs, that is fantasy. In the real world, what is good and what is evil is not so easily determined. That said, the forces of Lawful Stupid do not condone discrimination against anyone due to their race, sexual orientation, or culture. When such beliefs occur within the confines of our game, it is because the players are role-playing for the sake of character and story development. We hope that is clear to everybody watching. Any more announcements, questions, comments, insults? Um... We only don't like people that, um... <laughs> no, God, that I like chipmunks. I That's mean, not going to be Clarice. a problem at all. That's just going to be nothing but seriousness from here on out. Just nuts. <laughs> That's Jackson's new voice. <laughs> My <laughs> friends, it is time. <laughs> Is it time? I think it is. Yeah. Well, and I'll then pause. Just, you're gonna have to bury that breathe, for a while. Breathe. All of you can go to hell. <laughs> then we'll all then we'll all self mute. Thank you. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, 
and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time, Conscript Group 14 continued their exploration of the Undercellar to Lelizir's Elixirs, a high-end potion shop in the fallen city of El Torel. After a discussion regarding the drow and their place in the world, they descended still further, seeking a teleportation circle in the hopes that it could provide a means of escape for the numerous survivors hiding in the catacombs under the Grand Cathedral. After encountering and battling a group of Durgar, the adventurers learned that the Dark Dwarves were on a mission to track and destroy a massive demonic worm that had burrowed into the underside of the floating city. Leaving them to their work, the adventurers located the teleportation circle only to discover it was inoperable. Islin Mizonre, the Dark Elven thief and friend to Typhon, used a soul coin in her possession to activate it, but when she stepped into it, the chamber shook, and two grotesque Dragoth emerged, killing her and attacking the adventurers. Rim was able, with the aid of Silas's newfound spiritual resolve, to remove the coin from the circle, destroying one of the demons, but falling unconscious. After a desperate battle, the final demon was also slain. Typhon grieved for his dead friend, but just as Falcon was explaining why she could not return the mutilated drow to life, Rim regained consciousness, revealing that the spirit of Islin lived on within the Dragonborn's body. Conscript Group 14, what do you do? I say immediately, where is Rim? I'm sorry, your, your guess is as good as mine. When That's not up, good enough. Where is he? I, look, your friend's body is completely intact. I have to imagine that his soul went somewhere. Uh, perhaps he escaped into the circle. Escaped into the circle. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps familiar? you put him there and took his body over. I promise you, it was not intentional. I barely remember what happened. I felt blinding pain and then nothing. When I woke up, I had claws. DM, as I recall, we had dragged the top portion of Islin's dead body mm -hmm. out of the muck and into this little alcove upon which we reside. Uh, I'm going to check that half body, the, the top portion, luckily. Uh, for any signs, um, I mean, it was fairly well dead last we checked, but I'm going to just examine it just to see if it has a voice too. Islin sees you go over there and she immediately grows pale. Is that... Oh dear. Oh my goodness. And she falls to her knees. Uh, make a medicine check there, Silas. Meanwhile, Jax is looking for the soul stone. I, I did not roll a one. I that rolled a two for I a total two. of three. A total of three. Um, she <laughs> is, just looking at her, even from a distance, in order for her to be alive, there would have to be some incredible... Uh, necromatic man magic going on and you do not see any signs of life from the torso of Islin. Uh, oh. Make an investigation check. Oh, hey, me. So you're looking for what? I'm looking for the soul stone. Well, soul stone. The rim picked up the soul stone. Soul coin. coin. Soul coin. Soul coin. It's just a coin as far as we know. Yeah, but I'm looking for it. Okay. Natural 20. 27. Natural 20. It is nowhere to be seen. You, The area where you think that it was is slowly being covered by the black goo that has uh, spread from the body of the uh, demon that you killed. Um, and you can see the spot where it was, where it should, have, where it should be. And as the uh, black blood of the demon passes over that area, there's nothing there. 
except a claw mark where Rim managed to actually dig his claws into the flagstones and rip it out of the stone and the magic circle. I will, um, Tython will place a hand on the shoulder of Rim, now Eastlin, and um, sort of kneel down and say, Now's the time to steal yourself. Let that razor wit grow some walls. We're going to need to subsist in this form for some time until we can fix things. Calm yourself. Rise. Typhon, I just saw my freshly bisected body smeared with black demon blood. You'll forgive me if I need a moment to adjust. A moment, yes. But uh, this, I am certain this is not the most terrifying thing you may see in this realm. <sighs> this body is going to take some adjusting to. The tail is incredibly distracting. It's like having an unruly third leg. Well, fourth in this poor guy's case. My goodness, how do you gentlemen get anything done? <laughs> and what of your other abilities tied to your spirit or the body? Eastland closes her eyes and uh, she takes a moment and she tries to assume the form of the blonde woman that you saw um, in the uh, in the keep before, but she's significantly larger. She's it, it, she's disproportionately large. Well, shit. <laughs> but you still have the powers. I, I suppose so. I'll have to play with them a bit more. Most of my abilities rely on my ability to hide and I'm a bit large for hiding <sighs> I will do my best well you know how to use a long bow correct uh no I've never used one in my life oh hmm. and she sees Rim's bow which has been laid against the side of the of the wall and she tries to pick it up but she can really barely budget. Uh, nope. Nope, I'm afraid this is going to be useless for me. Well, we should probably just leave it behind then. I agree. Rim's <laughs> bow? Can I... <laughs> can I I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, unless they're being deliberately quiet, everyone can hear what's what they're yeah. saying. Uh, I, I, I we don't care. leave behind Rim's bow. We're not leaving behind Rim. We're not just letting you have his body. Well, trust me, I don't want to reside here any longer than I have to, but if you have any alternatives, I'm all scaly ears. Well, I, I don't know how in the world I was totally an advocate for you and trusting you, and now you've taken over our friend's body and you had a soul I, stone that you I'm know we I'm sorry. Needed? Oh, goodness gracious. This, I understand this, how just this point, looks. Just point of order, there's no way that you would have known that that was a soul stone. Oh, okay. So, uh, soul coin. Soul coin. Even the the logic I had was that when the demon explained it, he said I would know it if I saw one. That's a good point. Um, Very well. Make an arcana check. All right. I'm not very good at those, but I want to. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, hold on. My mouse is frozen. Of course it is. Okay. Wow. Did I oh, roll? Oh, that was Jax's. No, just oh. kidding. Um, Hasn't shown up yet. I was looking forward to the wow. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's showing up on my... Yeah, here, it's oh, coming. There you go. Uh, okay. The seven. Uh, oh, a seven. <laughs> so, well, really. I was actually considering giving you advantage since you did have that specific shout out. So go ahead, and you are aware of that. What Islin Mizonre put down on the magic circle was a, a coin larger than a gold piece, make of made of dark, corroded-looking metal, um, and it had a, a faint. Um, glow of a blue light that was emanating from it. She put it onto the ground 
and the blue light changed to black and it followed along the line of the circle and when it returned back to the coin the coin was no longer blue yeah cool all okay. right so yeah you knew about the soul stone that we needed and you kept it from us do you know what a soul stone is persephone i know what you just At this point of order we gotta call it, start calling them soul coins so sorry sorry soul coin. oh. do you know what a soul coin is the soul I know you just used one and that you deliberately kept it from us, even though it will save hundreds of lives if we have one. It's an innocent soul that's trapped inside a hunk of demon forged metal. Would you want to be responsible for holding over an innocent soul to a demon? I kept that from you for your own benefit. And then you used it. Then what is the soul free now? I believe so. So you don't know, just like you don't know where Rim is. Look, look, we, we can sit here and argue about this all the day long. Gieslin, did you plan to possess Rim's body the moment that your own body was extinguished? Trust me, if I had any choice of a body, this would be the last one. Well, no, maybe the goblin would be the last one, but this would be the second to last. This was not my intent by any stretch. I don't know how else to prove it to you, but by my word. Sean, can it's... I tell if she's telling the truth? Make an insight check. Rolling. Nice. 26 for that insight. Are you telling the truth, Yislin? She is telling the truth. Yeah. No. Are I, you I, holding I, anything back with a 26? Yes. Falcon would know. Yep. She's telling the truth, but not the whole truth. Mm hmm. <laughs> Look, I'll do everything in my power to help return him to his body if we can find him. In the meantime, if this bow is that important, I'll do my best to drag it somewhere you seem you deem safe. But I, I cannot carry this thing around. I'll be useless. Oh, I could put it in my bag. You, I said you absolutely can carry it around. You're a dragonborn now. That should be nothing to you. Just because I have his body doesn't mean I possess his strength. I have no. the abilities of my old self. I see. Well, and Yislin, you do definitely feel stronger than you were. Yes. Um, but the combination of a new soul in an unfamiliar body, the disjointedness has taken its toll. The bow is, you can carry it. It's not that heavy. To you, It can be carried. However, to use okay. it, to actually effectively use it, that is beyond your ability. That's both because had... both because you don't have experience using a longbow and you're just not strong enough in this form. That bow is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'll just give I it will... to me. Should we just? I mean, we could just put it in the bag of holding, right? Well, we're not leaving it, so that. No, absolutely. That's not. That's not even on the it table. It wasn't a serious she... suggestion. She plucks the. Uh, she sees the. Uh, um, the silver dragon coin that's floating around it and she plucks it from the bow and uh, she hands it to you Falcon. Perhaps you would be the best person to safeguard this. I imagine it was rather special to him. Yes, it was. And hopefully it can be used to call him back to his form whenever we can find a suitable substitute for you. Regardless, this teleportation circle has absolutely failed to yield any results and the longer we stay here, the more time we waste. Is there anything yeah. left of the circle, Sean? No, the circle, the runes, the magic yeah. energy, everything that had sustained its power was destroyed when um, Rim ripped out the coin. Typhon, so make our way Falkren, do either of you have any abilities to commune or communicate? I would hate to think that Rim is standing next to us screaming at this very moment and we can't communicate with him. We have to speak with the dead, but he's not dead. Perhaps if they switched and this body is dead, that may work. Versus Unless visibly upset at that idea. Yeah, I was. And, I, and I, I look at uh, I look at Islin was Rim, and I say, 
unless you can assure us that you sense Rim somehow. Yeah, I can't. I thought not. Uh, what happened to that coin? I believe it was destroyed by the circle. Oh. Look, we have Rim's body. Therefore, there is a chance that because we have his physical form, a, we can call him back from whatever realm, plane that he has, you know, found himself trapped in or pulled to. He has a physical anchor in this world. Provided, and Falcon looks directly at Yusun, that we take care of him while he is gone. My abilities are best served from the back. I, I unfortunately have no other ability to contact or commune with the dead. Or, and, and as Persephone already stated, Rim's not dead. But I say we waste our time standing here. This we is not a problem we can objectives. solve. Well, if it's possible, I, I should at least try, right? What exactly does that spell do, Persephone? I'm reading it Precisely. Right now. <laughs> Allow me to read the wording. Grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice within range, and it can only answer like pretty repetitive short sentences. Does it actually call the spirit of the dead creature back? Or is it a type of flesh memory or something like that? And what if it pulls my soul out of this body? Then what? Then maybe Rim would come back. Um, it says spell doesn't return the creature. Oh, spell does not return the creature's soul to its body, only animating spirit. So that's useless. Well, it wouldn't be because then if you tried it on Yuzlin's actual body, and if Rim's soul was in that body, then we know we've got to carry that body everywhere we go. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awfully disgusting. And we've got a bag of holding. Do souls persist <laughs> in dead bodies? I don't... Why would we need to... Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess that was out of character. But... <laughs> <laughs> Mine was uh, out of character. That didn't sound like Jack's asking that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was out of character, yeah. Um, Perhaps we should wait until we find somebody who's more attuned to this kind of information. John, what was the name of the wizard who sent us here who we can talk to sometimes? Corcoran Pebblemoss. Pebblemoss. I look at Falcron and I say, do you think Corcoran would know anything about this? Corcoran is an expert on demons and the like. He may have, he may, I mean, he, and he also is uh, head of the Temple of Knowledge. So Should if he doesn't, then he certainly should know someone who does. I'm sure he'd be quite delighted to hear of this dilemma in a perfectly compassionate way, of course. That makes him the only one, but yes. <clears throat> now, well, contact the him, just remember oh. the um. eavesdropping. Yeah. Oh, what do we do with Ask that? Ask it body? as a hypothetical. Uh, I would imagine my old body is useless to all of us. I yeah, but what if we need to resurrect your body? In that form, I yeah, there's, would prefer there's... to be shorter, but not that short. Everyone would be short. I suppose. Right, but there's there's short, and then there's half off. Like it's yeah, but don't you need something to be able to bring someone back? I um uh take out from my the pocket of my cloak the lock of hair. And say. I don't know if that's sufficient, but it's certainly less morbid than... Oh, I was going to go bite one of her fingers off. <laughs> when Islin sees you produce that from your pocket, she starts to smile. Creeps. Do you... Yeah, let's... <laughs> but like Rim smiling. No? But like, <laughs> well, uh, no, she <laughs> looks like a weirdly... Yeah, Gargantuan that's... blonde woman. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. I like it. I love it. Right. Dream of large, large women. women. Oh, yes. get out of my head! <laughs> yes. Uh, Perhaps we should cremate the rest. Sorry, Eastland, but I would tend there... to agree with you, and I 
worry that the necromantic energy that we've seen coursing through this place could find its way all the way down. I would hate to see you subjected to that. Before you start lobbing fireballs around or lightning bolts or whatever it is you do, is there anything on that body that's going to explode or otherwise cause us difficulty? Oh, let me check. I, I no, don't think... It's okay, that... I'll do it. Make an investigation <laughs> check there, unless somebody stops. Uh... Loot the corpse while she watches. I, I, I mean, do, do, do I know of anything problematic on my... On the upper half of my body, yeah, Sean. Twenty six. Um, <laughs> as as he would go, I would um so like, say Jax. Well, nah, I nah, we nah, didn't. Nah. I didn't get a chance to say anything, but <laughs> yeah, it's true. Anything on you can advantage on this? Yes, um, you I have believe. a very valuable pair of gloves that you would definitely not want anyone else to have. Oh, uh, oh, that's right. They wouldn't have. Okay, so. Um, Jax is already I will walk one. over to that. And, Jax. Uh, <laughs> they're a bit Stop. big for me. <laughs> no, they are invisible, but you would have found them with that investigation check. However, it does not sound like you would have been allowed to complete it. Oh. I'll take those. Thank you. Oh, I'll pick up the bow then. I'll keep that. All right. Which so... bow? I've already got rims bow in my uh, yeah, bag. Yeah, rims bow. <laughs> what, what bow are you looking for? The bow that she was using from the shadows before. Yeah. Yeah. There is no bow. What? There are no weapons on her of any kind. Dare you introduce Whoa. a powerful item like that and take it off us? <laughs> Only the nastiest to... of DMs do that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything but... else that I can give to Jax to pacify him from my upper torso? Gold usually you works. can show him. <laughs> you you can show him where the bow went. Nope, that's all right. All right. From your upper torso, I'll, I'll allow that up to you. Any trinkets that she might have? Uh, I'll I'll say uh, there's a necklace. So it's just, just a simple necklace, not very very fancy, but you're certainly welcome to this. Oh, thank you. I'll take that as my card, the treasure. All right. So, is someone using the sending stone to con contact Corcoran Pebble Moss? I Stephanie's kind of doing this on Falcon, like contact him, contact him, contact him. Blah, blah, blah. Explain to me how you wish me to convey this situation in twenty-five words or less. We'll let write it down, and then we'll take out all the extra words, and we'll edit it. Do you mean you've had a Can... source of contact to the material plane this entire time, and you don't have any way to get back? In the Can same he actually way reply that... is the question. In he the can. same way that, like a string. Uh, like a string with cans in a siege is a way of contact. Yeah, that's exactly what we've had. And you what have you tell used us it you for? Soul coin the entire time, and you didn't tell us. She glowers at you. <laughs> All right. It's especially um, so effective coming from your friend Rim. I glower at him, her. Can two souls exist in the same body? I think. Uh, Context is key here. Maybe this, this is, is something all we can almost discuss. Discuss. I'm, I'm certain two souls. I once heard a story of an an eccentric fellow named Zephlirin who existed with many souls at once. But all right. in so this hallway, with blood spreading towards us, perhaps this is not the best spot to discover this or not. Right. You are in no danger from the blood. However, your point is well taken. Valkren, you can call Sacred Flame, yes? I cannot. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's all right. Hmm. I can toll the dead, but they're already dead. One of us may have a torch, Typhon. Uh, make an intelligence check. I, uh, have I could Typhon. eat it. I'm quite hungry. Intelligence check, Sean? Typhon. Everyone? Oh, oh Typhon. Typhon. Okay. Um, intelligence check. Uh, 18. You recall that there is a trap upstairs that would be a very effective way of cremating something. That should work. I thought my eating her idea would have been better. There's two traps up there, actually. 
<clears throat> I respectfully disagree, Jax. Let's go. And I will wrap up the, uh, rewrap the body in the cloak that it I have it in. It has been a while since I've eaten a humanoid. All right. So the corpse of Islin in tow, what do you do? Is there is there is there going to be contact with Corcoran? Persephone is very persistent with Falcron about it. Oh, well, then, come up. With the help, words. help! Help me figure out this phraseology while we're walking. How many words do we have again? Twenty-five. I think it's twenty-five. If I'm not mistaken, let me double check my notes. Did you establish a code of some kind to protect the information? We didn't even know we had this until. We got yes. Here. No, I, I mean, I'm a cleric, not a rogue. So I, code speaking isn't exactly my. I don't point. think that we necessarily need to code it. I don't know that phrase "foul dark elf bitch" has possessed our companion will mean anything to the demons that may be listening. I think we can leave out the word "foul." Look at this. <laughs> she smiles at that. Also, it probably would sound like good news to any demon or devil. Um. How about need info? Uh, yes, 25 words or less. Need I'm... info on unplanned soul switch. So, Are we walking to the graveyard as we uh, as we uh, discuss I, this? I think we're definitely heading out of yeah. this. Yeah, this shop. At least, at least, the, uh... at least, we're going to go back to where those uh, those nice miners were at that that were ambushed. Who's uh, who's lugging the torso? A Typhon wrapped it up. Let him carry it. Well, you could also put it in a bag. Oof, I rather like the idea of Typhon carrying it. Excuse me. I'm trying to think of this damn message that you would like to send. I have no time for this, Silas. I will carry it. Soul coin placed in portal. Activated magical event. One dead, another touched coin. Soul of dead in body of one who touched coin. Please advise. Way better than the two sentences I've already written. So yeah, okay. So just so say say that say that again. You know, just <laughs> Dude, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold the stone up to your to your mouth, and you just you just do the thing that you just did. Soul coin placed in portal. Activated magic event. One dead, another touched coin. Soul of dead in body of one who touched coin. Please advise. It's good. Little, Is that 25 sharp. exactly? Yes. Sharp on your S's, but well done. Here for the high intelligence. Is uh, Typhon still exhibiting uh, those demonic aspects that he was exhibiting yes. before? The, and he uh, will look, yeah. and his sleeves are still rolled up, and he says, For now, Silas, the dark races of the realm are here to be allied with you. Here we are laid bare. Yeah, there are just. Can we also talk about the fact, I mean, scales aside, that you possessed Rim in the first place? Wasn't a conscious choice. Not you, Silas. I didn't possess him. What do you mean? Did anyone else see that? his eyes went completely white? I'm sure it was a trick of light, Falkron. The same as I spoke an encouraging word to you, I spoke an encouraging word to Rim. I regret it. Perhaps had he not reached the coin, he would still be with us. Okay, never know that for certain, but shall we at least get out of this damned room? Oh yeah, I think we're walking. We're already walking. <laughs> yes, you have. by now you have definitely made your way to the crevasse, at which point um, further conversation would probably have to wait until you carefully made your way around it. However, without any um, threat of battle, um, you are able to slowly make your way over to where the 
uh, Drogar are no longer in view. Um, those of you with high perception, uh, passive perception, can hear the distinct sounds of mining happening from further into the cavern. You make your way back to where the uh, cavern, the uh, hallways, masonry hallways, um, resume. And now you are uh, about to head up the steps past the doors that you, the door that you did not open earlier. And if you wish, you can continue. Very well, up the stairs you go. And now you are in the first Undercroft of Lelizier's Elixirs, which, as you recall, is a very comfortable bedroom. Might not be a bad place to rest. Mm. I don't know. I don't know about you, but having been knocked unconscious twice in the last foray, I could use a rest or two. I agree, but recall that within the next three days after we wake up, we need to have 3,000 gold or a soul coin. Blair at me all you want. I, I believe that this was also used in an effort to try to activate a portal, which would be, which would make hiding the passage irrelevant because all those souls might be saved, transported to the surface. The original intent of this expedition, yes? Yes, but wouldn't it have been nice if the group had been able to make this decision together? And you wouldn't have been able to keep your contract because you would have had a soul coin in your possession and you wouldn't have given it to the demon. You're welcome. Uh, for seven, he's very frustrated by that and just kind of walks away and sits on the bed or something. I'm actually going to take one of the desks uh, let's say the one on the western wall is a desk or bookshelf or something and put it in the open doorway uh, just being distrustful of the magic darkness just beyond it uh, I'm fairly strong so I don't necessarily need any help um, but you guys will all see me just trying to reinforce this space a little bit Falco's going to go over to uh, Typhon. Just, do you require assistance in laying your friend to rest? I don't think we need any particular pomp and circumstance here. She's, well, still with us for the most part. But thank you. And I will make sure that the, the lights are still blown out and then walk and lay the body just sort of over here. Mm-hmm. And then um, we'll um, walk back in and just look to her and say, well, is there anything you'd like to do before we send your previous form off? I know what to think about this, Typhon. I'm truly scared. But that form is useless to all of us now. I'd rather not look on it any longer than I have to. Prudent. Wise. All right. And I will then um, activate the other candles, or I guess... You just have to light the... Yeah, light the other candles and then have the imp trigger it. The imp triggers it. There's a blast of incredibly hot flame that sends a wall of heat into this room. That you all have to sort of back away from. It lasts for about 15 seconds. And when it dissipates, there is nothing remaining of the up, upper portion of Islin Mizomre but ash. Islin reaches out for your hand, Typhon. He almost is startled by it for a moment, but will um, take it delicately, but yes. Quickly squeeze and then say, uh, let go and look back to the group and say, right, I think a rest is in order. 
Agreed. And I'm starving. What's for dinner? Well, you got some of those rations in your pack still, don't you, Jax? Uh, I don't know if you remember, but by the pool, he was From sitting there eating them. <laughs> all of them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I, no, I remembered. I remembered. I well, I ate my ones. Shame. Yeah, is that what shame tastes like? I've got no idea what you mean. Mm -hmm. Right, well... Um, shall we? Mm -hmm. I will have the imp watch since it can see through the darkness and whatnot. I think we've just lost oh. Tess, haven't we? Just lost Tess. Mm. She's rebooting. Oh, I mm -hmm. thought she was just so focused. Yeah, no. We don't. <laughs> we don't need to do cameras. Focused with a dark intensity. <laughs> she's the last one in the line, so we don't need to do cameras. So I was like. Know. Does Probably. someone want to do a song of rest? <laughs> 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 I was just waiting. For she doesn't just feel like, like singing. Probably. Is this a long rest or a short rest? I think we were talking about short rest, weren't we? Yeah. It's up to you all. I was under a sh short rest impression, friends. Unless... Does it seem like a long rest? Would be. I don't need it, but. I mean, it's up to you all. Uh, what is you? I guess it depends on what you plan to do after leaving here. So I, it's been like a, I, I feel like we've run into more things than we intended to on our way to Raven Guard, and we need to take true. a long rest. Bef I think before we are like wherever Rage. rescuing Raven Guard from whatever happened to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, no, should, that's that's. I don't think we should idea. walk into that. And this seems like a, um, who's already traps on one side, and we have our, you know, yeah. I feel like rather fortified. We have a, anti magic on the other side, and. Or mm -hmm. ahead. So, right. Does that mean if you intend to go back to the cathedral, then a short rest would probably be enough to get you there. If you intend to go forward, that's what I was maybe saying. Not I think the, we maybe need you'll need more. I think we need to continue forward, so I think we need to take a long rest. Yeah. No. No. Oh, yeah. No, that'll be a. Yeah, we're pushing onto the graveyard. We'll, we'll we'll need to take care of some bonus ouchies. All right. Do you want to uh, send that message? Oh yeah. I did. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I sent it when I held the stone up to... Uh, All right, to so see. the message, you hold the stone, mm -hmm. and as the stone, stone senses your will, it activates, and there's a... It's emanating a slight hiss, and you send your message. After a few moments... Ah, hello! Damn. So coin use could cause drain, depending on event. Soul in transition could theoretically re-inhabit coin. Possible souls could be switched. Coins forged on Minoros. Well, that was unhelpful. Dun, dun, dun. The coin was destroyed, yes? It's a question for DM and the group, I guess. Well, I couldn't find it with uh, this investigation of a 27. Yeah. Oh. It, was definitely... it wasn't there to be found. No. Yeah, so it was definitely... Uh, so if it was there to be found, I would have found it. But that um, being said, it's it's. I think what Pebble Moss is trying to surmise is that it's possible to then use a, a, a blank coin or an empty coin to then transfer Yisla into the coin, then have Rim take possession of his own body back, and then maybe reincarnate Yisla into another form. You see some things around the Shrine of Sumper, Suffering. These things happen from time to time. Hmm. Perhaps. But soul in transition. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, his reaction didn't sound dire as far as our friend Rim is concerned.
Any word on Tess there, Ryan? Uh, I'm saying, I do not hear anything, but hold but a moment. You, you can't hear scramble. us smashing the laptop or... Take the camera with you. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so, while uh, Falkron is preparing his... Uh, herself for a long rest and Persephone continues to glower at Eastland. What do the rest of you do? And I should ask, um, uh, Eastland, do you wish another token or do you wish to continue using Rin? Um, you can give me uh, the blonde woman. I think that that's the form that sure. she'll try to keep uh, even though she's taller. Um, we'll keep that one. Uh, the blonde woman in thieves garb or blonde woman <laughs> I am beautiful with perfectly groomed hair and shining lustrous skin and straight teeth I mean, obviously that one okay right gotcha <laughs> so, um, I mean, logically that's the one that if we get back to all the other people that's the one that they saw true enough that's yes that one I think that was the original intent of the shape true She'll enough just be a foot taller because <laughs> I can shrink up to a foot correct with Wait. um disguise self yes. yes you can you can change yourself a foot either way but i but, can't i can't i still have a tail like if yes it, it doesn't the change the anybody who comes close will definitely it doesn't change the actual um comportment of matter it just you need puts a glamour up over it couldn't happen to a nicer person yeah step on your tail let's see here that's that could be potentially useful though. Well, while we're waiting, just a reminder for two people that we are in Halloween dressing up as our characters. Yes. Oh man. Uh, so it's gonna try, be fun. Try and... Yes, Samus gets to dress up as a perfect blonde woman now. Oh, that that's would why be a lot less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was holding on to that one. I was holding on to that one all day yesterday. <laughs> it's still going to be low budget. I might have to get like a mop and just put so, the mop head on top of it. So this was your dastardly plan all along because you just, you were looking at like the dragon masks and you're like, oh, this is way too expensive. Way too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> we got a way around this. Uh, we also have just been gifted 500 bits by Ugluck again. Hey, oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, yes, Ugluck. So that we gives us immortality, right? That's our first donation today. It is. So who currently has inspiration? Uh, uh, actually, it's Eislin, uh that was given to Rim. I assume that transfers. You've got a D6 one already. Sure, that'll yeah. transfer. Makes you've, sense. Uh, you've Same got a player. D6 one. This is a D20. So you can oh, roll. Oh, very this. nice. So everyone needs to roll a D20. Oh, right. is this going to be my night? Yeah. Oh, come oh. on. I thought mine was the 19 years. Okay. Oh, All right, I rolled <laughs> a seven. <I'm> st <laughs> Interesting. Can somebody quickly remind me how to make my rolls um, a whisper to me? It's under D, D Beyond. You click on the little thing, whisper rolls no, up I, at I'm, the top. Always even, whisper. Always whisper, but I'm not doing it from D and D Beyond. I'm doing it from roll 20. Ow. Yeah. Oh. Same. So we just oh, I see. the test to row. Yeah, slash whisper yeah. GM slash roll D20. No, I don't know. Or well, tonight you get to watch my rolls. Won't that be interesting? Um, I'm going to make your token for another time. Um, Take Rim, your time. That's perfect. We will uh, use the original one for now. Um, did you get an update on... Uh, Tess? Yeah. So Tess is currently uh, rebooting the computer. She says if it takes too much longer, she'll just hop on uh, and do side by side with my screen. Gotcha. For the time being. Do you want to roll right. for her? Do you want to roll for her? Shall I? Let's. All right. What could it hurt? I know, right? Yeah, clearly. I don't think it's going to beat a natural 20 for uh, Yislin anyway. Yeah, no way. All right, so she rolled a 14 for that one. Okay, well, right, well so... done. Well done, Samus. Yeah. Islin gets the inspiration. Thank you very much. Good luck. Yes, thank you very much. I mean, she so remember, keep, keep in bodies. mind that is that she's um, back from the dead. Keep you know, in mind that uh, uh, inspiration must be declared before the roll. Can I give Jax the D six that I had from last game? Because I can't keep track of both of them those, on my character sheet. Those cannot be transferred. No. So that I have is two. a 
Yeah, that is a that is equivalent to a bardic inspiration. Although I guess that we should then say that it falls under the rules of bardic inspiration, which means you need to use it within ten minutes, I believe. So perhaps that is gone. I, for, I was remembering it was a D20 when we did it last time. Oh, but well, if it was a, a D20, then... It might have been a D20, I don't know. I think it was, because I, I clicked on the inspiration. In which case, I would be happy to... Oh, in which case, Jax. you don't get a roll. And it'll be right, me. Yeah, you already it. have it. it goes and it to goes the... to Jax. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to take yes. a quick bio break while we're waiting for tests. Yeah, um, Sean, it is yep. um, four slash GM roll. Four slash GM roll. There's not a way to make it happen automatically all the time. I've got no idea, mate. I don't use. I guess because I don't have D and D Beyond up. I don't do That's DMing. Um, all right, so everybody, this will be a long rest. If you want to go ahead and click that over. Oh, I wasted a nat twenty rolling to the GM. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't I was need testing to it. Click on anything apart from untick short. Uh, short. Does anybody take a watch? Um, I can watch. Yeah, I'll take a watch. And then, uh, Sean, I would also like to take a, a moment during the long rest to just sort of uh, check out the bookshelves in the room and whatnot, since we kind of rushed, rustled All through right. that last uh, time. It seems like anything of import or value, as you spend a good amount of time investigating everything, it is is in other places. This Everything in this bedroom seems to be non-work related to whoever was uh, spending time here. Um, there is... Uh, few pamphlets about things happening in Elturel, um, books of uh, fiction, histories, that sort of thing. Um, nothing in particular catches your eye as mm. important. Lesai. Uh. So, has everybody completed their long rest? Uh -huh. I have rested long and Very well. So, eight hours later, you all awake. And there were no disturbances in the night or the day, depending. It's hard to tell down here in Avernus. What would you like to do? I imagine you want to deactivate that trap and get on out. Yeah. Indeed. Onward. And along you go. You reemerge outside of Lelysia's elixirs and into the streets of El Torel. The sounds of battle continue to rage. What would you like to do? Shall we head to the Grand Cemetery? See if we can't find the good duke. I think so. Very well. With haste. All right. Uh, Rhea. Uh, yes. Uh, Grand Cemetery. Yeah. Best way forward? All oh, right. Um, it is uh, it's this way. And she begins to lead you carefully through the wreckage, the rumbling, the flame spouts, and lightning strikes that are pelting this town. All right. Um, All right. You proceed along the streets, moving from shadow to shadow as best you can. Um, but Falkron and Islin. Not Falkron. Uh, Islin, what is your passive perception? Nine. Nine. That's right. <laughs> um, and <laughs> passive perception for Jax is uh, 19. 19. Um, Jax, you are positive you are being watched. Oh, okay. I will have a look by who. Um, as you are scrabbling down this alleyway, cutting between two streets, trying to stay off of main thoroughfares, um, you see someone following you and you follow the group around a corner and then quickly dart back to look and you see following you a dwarf uh, looks to be a female uh, wearing armor, carrying a hammer. 
she's uh, bloodied and bruised um, and not doing a very good job of hiding herself. But she is definitely following you all. Trying to be stealthy. No armor? Good luck. That's <laughs> right. Did Jay say words? <laughs> I haven't heard him if he has. Muted. Sorry. I, um, yeah, he was he was doing all sorts of gymnastics there. Hang on, I'm just trying to sort this out. Um, yeah, I turn around and I'll tell everyone that obviously we're being followed. I did do a bit of role play, but yes, it, the moment's gone. Sorry. <laughs> Should we take a break while we get all of this like, sorted we're out? Done. We're all set I'm, now. No, like we're good. I am here at least. I'm still troubleshooting, but I'm on my phone, so I can at least hear. Okay, and we can see you after a fashion quite dark but yeah suit your mood she's she's in a dark place yeah yeah mm. very upset <laughs> so, she's more uh, moody than silas what's we're with that? in hell dm <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> it's all my fault so we've just jumped across one of the main thoroughfares um Jax is aware that we are being followed and has shared that information with everyone he said we we're being followed by a armored dwarf of some kind. And then I turn around and point at her. <laughs> is she within sight? Um, yeah, it's, it, she's trying to be <laughs> stealthy, but so you've all you've all gone around a corner. Jax tells you, oh, I've seen someone, and you stop. If you want to like go back so that you all on mass go back down and look down the alleyway, you will all see her. I imagine we're all kind of doing this from the... Bing. <laughs> she stops, and she... Right. Comes walking forward. Right, hello. Sorry, sorry. I can't be too careful right here. Um, no, no, no need to apologize. Happy to see a, a, another dwarf. What? Ah, yes. Um, well, my name is uh, Grendel Thornamble, and um, I was wondering if you all could... Uh, you seem to be a, a fit lot. Um, I've, I've got a bit of a problem. Um, well, I guess we suppose we've all got a bit of a problem, um, but I've I've sort of found myself in charge of a group of uh, survivors, and I, I'm just trying to figure out how to get them some food or something. I, you all look to be doing all right. Uh, do you have any have any food on you? Oh, I've eaten all mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I look very pointedly towards Jax. I might have everyone else's as well. But you have gold. We're taking donations. <laughs> right. I don't know if you've noticed anything, you little vile creature. And she comes forward, hefting her oh, hammer. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, I'll pull out my little, tiny little dagger. Come on, hang. I dare you. No, I'll st stop, you. stop. Two of you. No, Jax. I'm, he's an acquired association. A oh, voracious. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've got people under my care that are hungry enough no, to eat goblin. I will kill them as well. Grand, Grand, have you have you made your way to the high hall? Uh, or is, no, is, is I don't know where that is. Oh, are you are you not I, from El Terrell? No, originally? I'm not from El Terrell. No, I was visiting when this oh. this insanity happened. Yes, uh, I will cast message to Falkren and ask her if she can continue the conversation in Dwarvish. Try and see if. Um, it is indeed a shared language and try and just say, you know, try and suss out, see if she's telling the truth before you reveal the location of the survivors. Mm. So, okay. so uh, I go ahead just and... Before you do that, um, what are the components of message, Typhon? Um, I, it's a... Uh, uh, oh. It is... Do, do, do. Um, I have to point towards him, and I kind of fiddle with a little piece of wire. Your, it doesn't require any um, verbal components? Uh, the verbal components are Just the message, you say. I Got think, it. and they're, uh, by the spell's description, no one can hear. Even though I whisper them, no one else can hear them. All right, that's subtle enough. She's not all that perceptive. Um, she's looking at you with a very pugnacious uh, expression <laughs> at all of you. I mean... I feel like I've managed to keep things rather calm, considering. So if you're not going to help me, then fine. I'll just be on my way. But thanks for nothing. 
And then I, I, I call back out to her in Dorvish and say, uh, hold and I say, and apparently I bark a little bit. Um, <laughs> Don't take that stone with me. <laughs> I, say, I, say, I, I, I do apologize for my group's rather uh, rough demeanor uh, where we're kind of going through hell right now. Yes, so, well, that's that's. And she responds in Dwarvis. Dwarvis, yes, I suppose I can understand that, but I mean, really, um, how many people in your group? Uh, let's see, at least five dozen. Any any women and children? Yes. Uh, have you been fair with that? Are you, are are they all right? Anyone injured? Oh, we're doing all right. Um, we uh, we had someone who was healing us for a while, but um, they went out. To, to try and find help and never came back. So now it's my turn. Ah, I see. I see. No, well, I say we'd certainly love to to help you out. And um, have you anyone? So you must have people from El Terrell, yes? Uh, yeah. The most of them are from El Terrell. Oh, all right. So, um, and then, uh, Sean, I want to make a uh, an insight check on all this information that she's given me. Very good. To sort of suss out. If she actually is kind of giving me, like, if she's just making things up on the fly, or oh, well, like the DM. Is... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, well, not, not a call out to you specifically. But... <laughs> what are they doing, Silas? Right. Is that like a dwarven mating call? All right, so I uh, rolled a ten for my insight. So I'm uh, sure they're is... speaking to each other the same way that you would to another goblin, Jax. She is. Um, what you see is what you get. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's yeah. got a very sort of like a permanent scowl, but kind of a energetic and happy demeanor beneath it. Um, and d- despite, you know, looking like she's been through quite a lot, she still seems you get the impression that she would be reacting like this regardless of the situation. Uh, her uh, her level of frustration and uh and um, dismay has not been altered by this turn of events. <laughs> she is what she is. All right. Um, Auburn hair, gonna, two um, braids going down yeah. the side. Let's say, uh, let's say I, I make a sort of a half a comment about, I uh, say, so, oh, very f- only people I know in battle who can keep their braids together are dwarven women. Am I right? You are right. <laughs> I'm gonna call. So, uh, I mean, again, food. That's all I'm looking for. Did you find uh, other survivors? Sure. Are they are they well in hand? Oh, uh, as as well in hand as one can be given the situation. Yes. Uh, so I'm calling Rhea over, so that way she can sort of help me uh, figure out the best directions to give. Uh, <laughs> Right. So we can kind of get, uh, get you um, back to High Hall and poor Sean, I apologize. Is that All right? They, so they think they should go to High Hall? And uh, she says, Oh, I, I had some people who mentioned that, that we could go there, but I mean, it's just me. <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's no way. There's no way There's we could make it without somebody finding us no or other, seeing us. No other fighters or anything like that? Not a one. Like I said, Perhaps. if there's a better place to be, maybe we should go there. But for now, I just need food. Uh, maybe if you're inclined, I don't mean to impose. If you've got something better to do, then by all means. But, you know, we could use a hand. We're- Stephanie um, walks up and she says, as sad as I am to say it, there is a, a cow that isn't long for this world in the elixir oh. shop. We just stopped by a cow changed the, into a cow <laughs> the oh, cow yeah. was a polymorphed <laughs> darn it i thought it was me and this a great idea. i wish it was still alive because that would be the biggest surprise <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, want yeah, i wanted to eat that i'm just like have you got anything to eat off in the distance <laughs> <laughs> nope not uh, a there thing <laughs> is some, there is some fresh water though i found that would be helpful the Barrel by the orphanage, yeah. That's. I don't know where that is. Oh, you're definitely knackered then. Uh, I think, to me, the best <laughs> chance of survival is getting elsewhere. 
bringing we don't i don't have food to feed dozens i don't think any of us do but eastland do you have any access to rim's abilities or anything of the sort uh, probably not I, nothing that i can conjure up i don't think and she she closes her eyes and she opens them again and she just looks at you and says i'm sorry Perhaps once we're able to get to our objective and his retinue, we would have enough armed people to be a proper escort for this group. Right, but the, the issue they need now is food. Does, does anyone have any rations left on them? Yes, but we're speaking about hours here, right? Not days. Right. Would you have her come with us? And then... No. But... Perhaps she can tell us where. Search, if you cannot help me, can you tell us where you're hiding them? Uh, yes, uh, right, the very northwestern part of this area of the city, on this side of the Great Divide. Did you see that thing? Oh, my Moradin's beard. Describe the building. Um, that's a theater. And Rhea perks up. Oh, I, I know that place. Yes. I'm going to look at it on the map using my uh, skills. <laughs> Your eyes. <And> right. <laughs> he said skills. My, I am skills. skilled with cartographer's tools and supplies and whatnot. Thank you very much, Typhon. <laughs> Bite your own forked tongue. Here. Oh. Is there. So I'm yeah. just going to scribble on that. It's the big one, right? Mm-hmm. You scribble on the map. It's already done. Call yourself a it is called the Swan. I'm scribbling on the map as a player, not as t not as Silas. Uh, okay. He would not deface such a thing. Oh, of course. The Swan Theater. There was a surprising uh, amount of food in the basement. It sustained us for a while, but it's run out. Oh. Have you searched any other nearby buildings? I'm sure there are stockpiles in some of the ones that weren't destroyed. I've not had any luck. Approximately how many people are there? Uh, when I left, there was... I'm sorry, not so great with the numbers. Maybe... More than 50. Mm. Less than... 100. A good number. Hello? <laughs> Sorry, that's my mobile. It's Corcoran calling back. <laughs> I forgot oh, to see. Oh. <laughs> All right, the stone's, stone's ringing. Hang on, just one second. <laughs> hmm. so, right, so no food. Just, I, I unfortunately Certainly am... not for five dozen. Oh, let me look in my bag. Well, my but, and, any rations whatsoever? Check it. Well, I had some left, but I mean, we needed more. But now that no, they know no, no, there's I this other place we could go, they have food there. I've got one uh, day's rations. I've got well, they've got people there, and they said that we're they're trying to get we're trying to get everyone together as best we can. And they are as hungry city. as you are. Well, maybe but we shouldn't least... go there then. I don't know. I I'm not. <laughs> This is not my usual uh, thing that I do. I, uh, I, I'm usually the one uh, you know, out in the front fighting, taking care of the people, the wee ones back at home. That's, that's not what I do. That's not my thing. But, um, <laughs> well, when in Elterel. But, mm -hmm. um, right, so you know where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let, uh, see, let me see if I can find some food. Can I, um, like, use my nose and survival or whatever trying to find some interesting like yes um bakery or you know whatever it's not been you can roll a survival check or maybe Rhea a, can help out or a, can, or a perception check at advantage can Rhea look at the map a survival us? check yeah oh, I've survival rolled check 18 i, I rolled you, it before yeah if, you, if it's, uh, it's just the same roll but yeah you smell Something smells sweet. Okay. Something nearby. Oh. 
We got Jax. I can smell something. I smell my pits quickly. No, it's not that. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll okay. follow the smell. Right. What, Chewy? What, Chewy? Um, I don't care what you smell. Get in there. So you all <laughs> begin to follow Jax as he leads around. And nearby, you find the smashed remains of a pastry shop. Um, digging around inside it, you think that all of the baked goods that were there have been covered by the rubble. However, you do find a large sack of flour. All right, that that can be used to make food, right? Do you have a source of fresh water? I have no idea. I don't Definitely know what it is. Uh, no, no, I guess we don't. Well, I've just told you where some water is. Oil. Oh, that's right. <sighs> how, now, how far back is the, the orphanage from where we're at? Because it was far, just down it? the... Street, I believe, right? Rhea says, "Oh, it's um, a few few blocks to to the west. No. It's inside. It's orphanage. There'll be a lot of dead children. You can't miss it. Right. Um, they, and there's water there. There's a fresh barrel of water just inside the doors. Can I double check with an investigation <laughs> if there's anything else in here? Um, sure." <laughs> no. That's definitely well, all there is. Yeah, that's right. That's all there is in there. Um, you find a broken jar of icing that still has a little bit of icing at the bottom. Oh, I'll, I'll eat that quickly. <laughs> so, it's delicious. <laughs> um, right. So, a sack of flour. <laughs> she puts it up on her shoulder. And you're welcome, by the way. I guess I'll go look for those dead children. Good luck to you. As I you didn't catch your, your names. The... Oh, say, I'm sorry, I'm Fulcrum Boneforge. Goblin scam. Um, and these are friends, the snot goblins. Well, I've heard worse. And she turns away <laughs> and she begins <laughs> heading back towards where you've directed her. And, and she I'll, vanishes out of sight. I'll shout after her in Dwarvish. We'll look for you at the swan. Hopefully we'll be alive. Eastland he... goes to you, Jax, and kneels down next to you and says... I have grossly misunderestimated you. I know, right? Not even a thank you. I've got no idea what you mean. That was very kind, what you just did. Well, I wanted some share. I wanted to eat it for myself. How are you not full? You've had many rations. I am. I've got a bit of a tummy ache. <laughs> and I she don't know if I'm mistaking that for hunger. Shall we continue? We should try to make our way to the Grand Eat. Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Lulu comes and as the group moves on, is flying along behind you and she comes and she lands on your shoulder, Jax, and says, It was a very good thing. Oh, I know. I'll give her a lick because I know she tastes like candy floss. You taste <laughs> lovely. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> she flies back up into the air and continues along. Is it wise for her to be out and visible in hell? Perhaps she should keep low. Or lower flight plan. I don't think it's wise for any of us to be visible. Well, especially not her. She's rather detested by the creatures who reside here. Do tell. Is that common knowledge amongst the creatures that reside here? I don't know. This isn't my home. Well... How do you know that, then, Yuslin? She is a celestial being, isn't she not? The abilities that she's displayed. She would be hated by... Am I speaking out of turn? No, oh, you're no. very correct. Quite logical. Yes, yeah. Yuslin makes a very good point. Lulu, perhaps you should uh, tuck in with Persephone? Persephone reaches her hand out. And she flies down and lands on your hand and walks up it and goes into your cape with her little uh, trunk sort of peeking out like a periscope. <laughs> and I, I kind of whisper to her, for now, stick with me and, and not Rim. What happened to Rim? 
I hope not. <laughs> I'm just imagining this little truck being like. Same? Yeah. <laughs> he's. It's not Rim. We have to find Rim, and I'm terribly worried that he's not findable. Hmm. I don't think he's far. What do you mean? Uh, I think I would know if he was really gone. What do you feel? Is he near us? I think. Do you think he can hear us? I don't know. Please tell me the second you feel like that's changed. Okay. And that kind of takes a little bit of the furrowed brow away from Persephone as she's walking with everyone. And you continue on your way towards the Grand Cemetery. Shortly before you reach it, there's another... <laughs> as Elturel settles a little bit. But when the rumbling reaches the point where it normally subsides, it continues with a... And grows louder as you realize there's another vibration and destructive element happening. And a few streets over, looking through alleyways in between buildings, you see the form of a massive uh, purple armor plated serpentine creature going <laughs> down the street, the going bomb. in a direction opposite from which you are traveling. And that would be the worm. We must yep. not fear. <laughs> what did you say? I said we must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Well said, sir. Um with that So, oh, go ahead. Okay. So, we were looking at the when we were down before and we saw like little little tunnels. This is much bigger than that, yeah? Yes, it is. The tunnels that you saw were of a significant size, but it, the tunnels actually seemed, looking at the actual worm and the tunnels that it came through, Yeah, it seems to be much larger than you would have expected the tunnels to, uh, for a creature of that size to to be. Right. Because as, I don't know, when I was thinking about how to deal with it, I thought it looked like the <clears throat> tunnels are about five feet across. About five feet across, indeed. The thing you just saw was much larger. Gotcha. Interesting. Well, that is going to be a problem. Potentially. Though it seems this city's falling apart. So best we not stay on it any longer than necessary. forward and eventually you reach the Grand Cemetery of El Torel the 10 foot high brass fence that once surrounded El Torel Cemetery has fallen in numerous places and a wide gate allowing access to the grounds has been torn from its hinges several humanoid body parts adorn, adorn the spikes atop the fence posts some of the body parts wriggle and writhe as if undead, twitching in concert with the lightning flashes of the companion. Cracked gravestones and crumbling monuments are scattered across the cemetery grounds, whose center is occupied by a chapel dedicated to Lathander, Torm, Helm, and Tyr. That once holy structure now glows with a fetid purple radiance. You're about 300 feet away from it, on the edge of entering into the cemetery. Any sounds that we can receive, Sean, of like conflict or Make a perception or... check. All right. I'll be on the lookout and listen for that as well, just in case I can see or hear anything. A 26. And a 15. Over the sounds of battle emanating from below and elsewhere in El Terrell, you hear nothing 
coming from the cemetery. It is it's as quiet. quiet as death. Do you want me to scout ahead? So Sean, with that twenty, with that perception, it might like. So obviously, we have the 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 temple or the the temple itself is like got the. It's on a bit of a hill, and then yeah. there's gravestones and a graveyard surrounding it. Anything else that's going to draw my focus or or pull my so eye? You, you look around, and you see a little movement disappearing behind a tombstone, and then another one, and another until you look and you see dozens of skeletons and zombies wandering aimlessly in the cemetery. And each time the companion above (laughs) sends out a lightning bolt, they all (laughs) even though the lightning bolt is striking far away from where you currently are, it still seems to have some sort of effect on these creatures. And they're just moving aimlessly around the cemetery. Rather disconcerting. This place is... Uh, uh, let me see if I can see some tracks. Oh no! Oh no! Jax, be very careful. Okay, but before I do that... I've just been gifted another five hundred bits. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Thank Yay. you very much, everybody. Roll. Pixie Quinn! Thank, Thank you very much, you. Pixie. Uh, everyone, roll apart from me and Rim. As it is 500. I got a rock. Will somebody roll rock. for me? I'll roll, I'll for, roll you. for you. Oh, good on you. All right. Oh! Oh! Might be me! It looks like it's a foul friend. Sorry, Persephone. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I got it last time. The Falcon wins. The reward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pixie. Inspiration. Thank Yay. you very much, Pixie. Oh, let's continue. Yeah, I don't forget for that tracks. you have these people for very important roles. They'll be very handy on D and D Beyond. You can tick the inspiration, so you know you've got it. Oh right. yeah, oh, I can and have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will start looking for tracks. All right, make a survival check. Dan, Dan, so that's Dan, Twenty-two. Um, so in the last three or four days, you see several booted and some armored feet have passed through these walls, these, this gate. But since then, nothing. Can I, are they, f- am I able to follow them? Yes. With a roll of a 22, absolutely. It looks like they follow a path from where you were standing outside of the cemetery through the gates moving through the what looks like it might have at one time been a very pleasant park but is now filled with desiccated and dead flowers cracked and crumbling tombstones and undead a handful of zombies is one thing but I don't think we could safely get across with this many Oh, we've got a falcon. They don't like a falcon very much. No, they don't. I have a... It's my personality. Uh, Well, Jax, shall we... I will follow follow them. All right. The tracks, that is. Not the undead. I will pull out my dagger and hide it. All right, are you you making a stealthy I will go stealthily um, and try to position myself that they can still see me. That is easily done. The gate, the gate is bars. It is not a solid wall. Twenty-five. You duck into the shadows and begin to move into the cemetery. Everyone and can can see me. Yeah, you are able to traverse this area without being seen by any of the undead. However, as you are moving through these creatures being very, very stealthy. You get the impression that it's almost too easy. And 
doing a little bit of an experiment, you sort of throw a rock at one of them, and it <laughs> hits it, and it <laughs> has no uh, it has no um, reaction whatsoever. So I pick one of them and sort of like come out and see if it can, like you know, so so it can clearly see me. Does it not react? Mm-hmm. Doesn't react at all. Stumbles past you, brushes you with its undead leg as it walks by. Takes no <laughs> regard of you whatsoever. <laughs> I pick his pocket. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ten. That's not his pocket. <laughs> you reach in. You reach into the uh, into what you think is a it's pelvis. It's a <laughs> piece of the ragged scraps of clothing that it was wearing when it was buried. And you reach, and it just comes away in your hands as dirt and dust. And the zombie that you've picked looks down at you, and then looks up. And uh, continues walking away. I sift through the dirt if there's a big worm in there or something I can eat. <laughs> sure. You find a grave worm. Oh. Good luck. Roll initiative. I mean, it's all right, guys. You can come through. These are friendly. I, I, I enter the cemetery. And as Jax has discovered, these undead take no notice of your presence. Is there any sort of uniform appearance of the undead? Are they obviously dug up fresh out of these graves, or do they all wear a uniform? Is there anything between per- each one that's remarkable? Make a perception check. Can I, yeah, can I assist on that? Sure, make a perception check with advantage. Uh, rolled, in, rolled a 20 the first time. Let's see if I can yeah. do better. Nope, so 20 stands. 20. Um, many of these graves have show uh, evidence of having been disturbed. Um, and based on that perception check, it seems to have happened relatively around the same time. The types of undead, it's skeletons and zombies. Um, the zombies obviously being the ones that have been dead the least amount of time. Based on clothing, um, adornments, it's just the dead of El Torel. Um, you see some that look like they were buried with some sort of uh, station, some that were were definitely soldiers of some sort, maybe uh, with a uniform with a, some ranking and insignia. Um, some are wearing remnants of probably what was beautiful gowns at some point. Um, laborers. A, a variety. The rich, the poor. Do any of the, the richer looking ones look slightly fresh more freshly dead i guess does that make sense you said the zombies are the ones who died more recently sure um if you are curious about that as well silas you with a 20 perception there are definitely some that are that look um like they may have died within the last month or so and do any of us have any reason to think that any of them are like do graven guard people like that fresh ah no, none of them appear to be wearing any of the livery of Raven Guard, Guard, or the Flaming Fist. Okay. So Doran's not among them. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Doran. May he rest in peace. That was terrible. That was, terrible. That was awful. <laughs> you have nice. forfeited your right to speak for the rest of the game. I accept that punishment. <laughs> so, right. I thought it was quite I, good. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Excellent. You um, she's infected. More. Now there's two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Soon there will be three. <laughs> and the number of the counting shall be three. What do you all do? I think yeah, we should I'm continue following, to this yeah. building. I'm following yeah, the tracks. Yeah, so... so if, Oh, go ahead. You're following Jax, who's following the tracks, who, but the old lady who's followed the swipe. Anyway, anyway, so, yeah. The swipe. city's descent into Avernus has taken its toll on this once beautiful building. Um, nearly all of the stained glass windows as you approach have been broken. 
um, and you can see into the chapel. Um, the outside walls of it have been smashed. They're just rubble. Um, and the main doors are hanging open, one of them completely uh, askew. No sign of other creatures in or around the building can be seen. But do the tracks the building the dead inside? Dead. Yes, they do. You said that the building had like a like a dark energy about it? Yes, it is glowing with a purple, dark sort of... And as you're closer to it now, you can actually feel it almost like a vibration as you step towards it. It is definitely emanating some sort of necrotic energy. Hmm. Uh, what could go wrong? Something, like something we feel would hurt if we touch it. Bake an Arcana check. Um, somebody might want to I, do that. I could, uh, uh okay. Uh, yeah. You're asking Typhon? <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah, ask Typhon. Uh, sorry. Falkrin turns to Typhon and says, Typhon, <sighs> are you, do you know what this kind of energy is? Or should we be aware? Well, it's purple energy. Well, we should definitely be aware. He got to purple. As to the type, <laughs> so 26 oh, for an Arcana. Nice. It is definitely necrotic. However, looking at it and seeing its effect on the area around it, and you sort of gingerly hold out a hand to see if it gets worse as you move closer to it, it does not. It just appears to be a concentration of necrotic energy that is infusing this area, and it is not... Are inherently dangerous to you. Hmm. However, you suspect that were you to die, there would be a different story to tell. Does it, uh, it kind of resembles like almost the radiation from what's been striking from the companion? It's a it similar a energy. Very similar energy source. Mm -hmm. Well, I will sort of describe that to the group that it's not immediately dangerous, but. Oh, good. I'll lead on then. I will uh, head inside. Go ahead and arrange yourselves however you wish to be arranged. Where are we? Hopefully you can see each other. I'm going to be, be next by to Zivik. Zivnathar or Zogal. Hmm. Those should not be visible. We're nice. Hide your eyes. That's why we said it. Oh. Uh-oh. your ah. eyes. Approach with disadvantage. There we go. That takes Very time. good. Thank you. I will go and check My character is not selectable, Sean. Hmm. It's because it's not really your character. It's not it's really your usurper. Not your soul <laughs> usurper. Try dragging yourself. Can you move that? Well, obviously, you can. Oh, yes. Okay. Just resize them. Thank you. Oh, you're so big. The green is the AC. I always mix the two. AC is green. So you've walked all the way up to the door. I meant when I said when I said arrange yourself where you wish to be. I meant in that one little group there. But go oh. ahead, and, go ahead and put yourselves wherever you want. I'll describe what well, happens I'm, as you approach. I'm first, so I will All head right. towards it. And then I'm, then I'm behind Jax. So, what about goblin eyes? You can see the front of this chapel, and there are uh, pillars holding up a, uh, a bit of a of a overhang of a roof in front of the large broken mahogany doors and on each of the pillar are carved um, very impressive and skillfully carved statues um, each one of them different and distinct from each other okay They're just statues and of course the there is shattered glass everywhere I uh, check the floor for traps and the door for traps. All right. So I will um, make a the investigation check. He will put his glasses on. And I will roll a five million. Sixteen. Um, this door does not appear to be trapped. If it ever was, it was broken long ago. But as you step up to examine it, you hear coming from around the corner the sounds of heavy footfalls oh, yeah. and to your south appear three very large 
horned skeletons, each one of them holding a massive battle axe. And as they come around the corner and look and see you, you see glowing red in their eye sockets and they flash. They heft their axes. And when we come back from our break, we will roll initiative. Welcome back. The adventurers have gone back into the streets of El Torel, leaving Lelizier's elixirs after a long rest and continuing their way towards the grand cemetery of El Torel, where they have now arrived, only to see a patrolling group of massive horned bull-like skeletons coming towards them, wielding massive axes. <laughs> it's not distracting at all. My keen yeah, intellect makes me very fast. It's true. My armor makes me kind of slow. So I'm seeing Jax, Typhon, Yislin, Falkrun. What did you roll, Persephone? Uh, 13. Persephone. Um, Stephanie's on there with a 13. Rhea. My mantle mourn. Rhea is on there with a 12. And Lulu. Right. I believe that's everyone. So at the top, we have Typhon of Igus. Ooh. I will. Uh, come on forward here. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. And I have to measure here. Measure twice, cast once. Um, <laughs> and I will um, spin my hands in concentric circles, conjuring three bolts of fire. I'm going to send them forward to this one as I um, chant Caleste uh, Fiotsia and have them impact this one, casting the, of course, Scorching Ray. Indeed. Um, I need to move the map over a bit. Just kidding. I thought I had it prepared. Oh, okay. I don't have it prepared. So. You want us um, to come back to you? Um, no, we will cast. Uh, 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 yes. Come back to you. Okay, oh, so Jax. Um, I will. Go behind this pillar and hide, if that's possible. Very well. Roll a stealth check, please. 23. That beats their passive. You are hidden. And I... Can I hold a, an action to shoot? Uh, what is the trigger? Um, When they close in on Falcon. All right. You are holding an action. When the last one Perse hold, moves in on Falcon. When the, when the last one moves in on Falcon. All right. <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Um, Persephone. I can, if, if can I jump Oh, you're ready? Okay. I'm just going to cast my cantrip, the chill touch, see if that works. Chill touch. Okay. Um, I've got on a 17 one? to hit on upper left. Go red, blue, and green. On red, you said? Mm-hmm. And this is a 17 to hit? Yes. That hits their AC. Um, I have roll an eight to damage. Does it do damage? Um, it is cold. Uh, it's necrotic damage. Yeah, you see the um, dark energy crackle over it and bits and pieces of uh, the bone wear away as if time has taken it. Um, and when you get a chance, just somewhere up here, up, you know, 
20 feet in the air or so, imp invisible, imp waiting indeed. for stuffs. And that's, that's um, me. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Got it. Um, Persephone. All right. I'm going to wait. Uh, use my dash action and uh, head up to. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell Lulu, stay hidden. Okay. That's uh, that's all for me. All right, um, Typhon. If you can see that you can move this imp, confirmed. Fantastic. Rhea goes. Rhea charges forward using her action and her movement to go. Sixty feet. After her is Falkrin. All right, Falkrin is going to go ahead and. I charge up the steps, drawing quietus. I charge, I charge up the steps. Come on, move. There we go. I charge up the steps, drawing quietus, and not looking for a window this time. Uh, get to about there. Should be all of my movement. And then I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Toll the Dead on Red Skeleton. And, and then you are standing between uh a uh, statue of a human paladin of Tyr, obviously holding the Tyr holy symbol, mm -hmm. and a um, and a human wizard, a uh, female. And then, and then Sean, like how how high up off of the ground does that put me? Um, uh, good question. I was just trying to get some height because yeah, there. yeah, you are higher up. Um, six feet. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'm now six feet taller. Oh, to be tall. All right. Uh, so she gets up there and then she casts uh, Toll the Dead. Toll the Dead so on. I need a wisdom save on Red Skeleton. Red Skeleton. Love it. <laughs> I know, right? Let's see. Uh, this is a, uh, This is not a disadvantage. This is a nine. That is a fail. It is a fail. And it has. it's missing its hit points. Yes? It is. So roll your damage. I shall. All right. So it takes... 14 nice. necrotic damage Fantastic. from Toll the Dead. Dude, we lost a camera again. Yeah, I know you. Can't wait for it okay. to rejoin. Yeah. Um, that will bring us to Silas. I'm sorry, I skipped Eastland. I apologize. Oh, that's all good. Um, I am going sorry, to... So if I, uh, if I make my 30 feet to here... Um, can I crouch low enough to bonus action hide behind, behind these stairs? Um, yeah, the stairs will provide, uh, you will be out of line of sight of the um, skeletons. Okay. Uh, then this is my first time doing this. Uh, stealth roll for that? Yep. There's a bonus action stealth that beats 16. their passive. Um, I believe that they are beyond my short range for the short bow but <clears throat> the long range for the short bow is 320 so that would be an attack at disadvantage is that correct it is um i believe it takes an action to summon the weapon oh okay you just double uh, check but it lasts if it's a hex blade it's forever a yes yeah 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 oh. yeah it gets keep oh it. okay in so case, you want to say, uh, first time user, you want to just say that this is the, that you had summoned it as soon as you uh, had moved into dangerous territory? No, we can play it out. I'll, I'll use my action to summon the short bow, and uh, and I right. will hide. You are hidden. That will bring us to Silas. I'm going to simply run forward. Uh, that'll put me about right in front of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. That's it. Contrary to what Falker believes, I don't have any special abilities. You're special all on your own, Silas. Pretty sure friendship counts. Oh. Friendship is magic. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. Friendship is magic. Told the dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
They all rush forward. Let's see. What are we going to do now? We Get dart. Them. Yes! Oh my god! A Very last nice. Starfighter reference! Can I this shoot? episode has it all, folks. Um, like if, yes, if that is the uh, the trigger, then you may shoot. Which one are you shooting? Uh, I'll shoot red. Red, very well. As it's there for the taking. Oh, 26. 26 is a hit. 22 non-magical. 22 non-magical damage. Thank you very much. Um, that is as far as they go. Well, that's good. Lulu is still in your pocket, Persephone, who is no longer with us. She's the time trying being. to join. I'm right. accepted. It's just not, not coming in yet. So we will go back to the top of the order with Typhon Ficus. Yes, I will move up to here and I will stick out my hands and call out the words Epodin Yasrapi and a lightning bolt Ooh. will shoot out. I believe I can get through each of their squares right here. I think you nice. can actually. Please use the template. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll drag <laughs> yes, it on. Where's the, the, I bought the you. Light. Lightning bolty. This go. is a deck save, right? Correct. I, um, and once you give me the option, then I can move. Oh, maybe I can rotate it here. Kind of, yeah. It's this lightning bolt crackles in Typhon's hands and then <laughs> the sound of thunder as it bursts forward, passing through all three of the skeletons and disappearing out into the distance where it seems to hit a crumbling bit of masonry that's beyond the cemetery, <laughs> causing a little bit more destruction. You hit uh, another 50 zombies and we get the experience points for that, Sean. Right. I, I believe only one of them succeeded. That would have been green. So he takes half, the rest take full. Um, and I will give an extra three points of force damage via power surge. Very good. <laughs> Just, I think I can only do it to one creature, though, so let's do that to red. Red. Red disappears in a cloud of white dust. The head... Ooh landing on top of its gigantic axe. Was the three damage enough to for the extra? To do you don't it? know. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was right. definitely effective, and it has taken its toll on the others as well. Cool. Uh, and that's, that's all I got. Got it. Just a second here. Very good. All right, that will bring us to Jax. Um, where I currently am, can I hide? Um, you can try. 19. Uh, that is a success. You are hiding behind the statue of, uh, looks like a human paladin of Tyr. Mm. I shoot over Falcon's shoulder at, uh, I shoot. Blue. Okay. 20. 30, 20. Hitting AC 20. Very well. Oh, your damage? That is 19 damage. 19 points of piercing damage. <laughs> Stay where I am. Yep, you're still alive. What? Got it. Just. All right. And that will bring us, unless you have anything else you wish to do, Jax? Um, no. I'm safe, staying where I am. Persephone. <laughs> um, all right. Can you hear me? Yep. Cool. Um, I'm going to hit blue with my crossbow. Um, in theory. 
with the a, a dirty twenty to hit. Uh, that's a hit. And it'll take non-magical uh, six piercing. Okay. And I'll do it again. Uh, an 11 to hit. 11, it manages to deflect it with its large axe. Cool. That's me. Um, and actually, I'm going to uh, move a little bit like up onto these stairs here. Good. Rhea. Rhea runs forward. One, two, three, four, five. At blue, blue was holding its attack and smashes at her with its great axe. Mm. That's a hit. 21 points of slashing damage. Oh. Oh. Rhea. Rhea just <laughs> falls to the ground, but manages to roll as she does, and she comes up slashing at it with her longsword. Mm. Oh, shoot. Did this work? Yes, it did. Good. Getting AC 8. And AC 25 with a crit, and that will finish it. Nice. Retribution. Whoa. Well done, Rhea. Is that Rhea's first kill? No. Uh, no. She's had others, surely. Not it's, many. It's but... been a while. <laughs> put this here for a moment so that I can do this. And there we go. All right. Rhea is finished. Falkrun. All right. Falkrun is going to go ahead and move forward. And then to there for 25. And then she's going to pull the dead on. I think that's green is the one that's left, Sean. It is. All right. So she will pull the dead on that. You were standing next to a statue of a elf male. Looks like some sort of warrior. Got it. All right, so um, I need a wisdom check. All right, yes, of course you do. Roll a 17. Uh, ah, curses. I think that is the exact thing you need to do to beat me. Well, oh. you are told the dead <laughs> rings out and it doesn't seem to phase this skeleton at all. Well, the curses. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my bonus action to cast Healing Word for Rhea, so she will get, uh, that'll be uh, eight life back to her. All right, Rhea is healed for eight. And then I I give myself uh, two points of life, which I don't need, but that's all right. All right. All right. And that's me. Islin. Islin will there in the uh, back. step the, uh, out. You have summoned the Hellfire short bow. It appears in your hand. I'll try to take I will it. Uh, uh, pop out behind the stairs, and uh, I am within range, so I will take a shot at green. Uh, ten, I'm afraid. Ten does not succeed. All right. Uh, the arrow goes streaking past it, you had burying range. itself in the... Yes, you were hidden, so you do have advantage. Oh! Thank you. Thank you. A little extra uh, choaching from the rogue. We're all here. Ah, 22 hits. 22. We're all here to help all each right. other out. Take the village. That would be 19 points. 19 of... is a hit. Uh, 19 damage. 19 damage, yes, from a 22. Oh, uh, I don't like to math. Just say it's enough. I mean, I'm definitely. 33. No, oh, sorry, 19. 19. Yes. Very good. Uh, with that... my movement. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, go ahead. With my movement, I'm going to come up the stairs and I will bonus action hide behind this pillar. Very good. This person looks like a gnome. The statue, the bottom of the statue is rocks and designed to be sort of a, um, a uh, forest woodland kind of motif with vines and flowers and then in the middle is a gnome uh looks like a cleric of torm hmm. typhon uh, looks over sorry no please i was gonna say typhon looks over his shoulder to say nice shot and cannot see you and you see just a smile <laughs> toothy grin that's why he says hey man nice shot 
What a good shot, man. Anything else, Yislin? Uh, uh, 26 on my stealth to hide behind. That is pillar. more than enough. And, Silas. And done. So he's still alive, then. He is still alive. Well, let's see what I can do about that. I'm going to attempt to hit him. Rolling a one. Oh, one, no. I'm afraid, is not oh. enough. I'm going to turn around and let him hit me. No. <laughs> 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 well, that sucked. I deserve this one. Um, oh. Oh, that's it for me. Let's stop All right. There. The Minotaur takes a step back. A what? Itar? You may take your attack of opportunity if you wish. Sure. Wait, Excuse no, me. Minotaur. The skeletal Minotaur. Uh, that I is not a getting better. A two. Getting better. I can, I'm gonna say. <laughs> Just step back. I'm done. <laughs> moving on up. Moving on. Up. And it begins to barrel towards you, moving ten feet. It comes up to you and it hits you with a gore attack. I dodge. <laughs> and it's AC thirteen. I think that I dodge. You, you dodge. <laughs> he has missed. That is the end of its turn. Lulu. Lulu stays put inside the care of Persephone's clothing. Back to the top with Typhon Ophicus. Mm. All right. Things look pretty well in hand. I will just um, do another chill touch. Synchronisticos. 26 to hit. That is a hit. For <laughs> three chronic <laughs> damage. All right. Jax. I will repeat. Rinse and repeat, rather. Uh, 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 for a 27 nice. that's a hit mm. I have clicked the damage 16 damage 16 points of damage thank you very much and then I will hide again Eight. for 20 that succeeds Persephone uh, I'll take a couple crossbow hits at the remaining Minotaur skeleton. D and D Beyond's catching back up with me. A sixteen to hit. That is a hit. Takes non-magical five piercing. And again, oh, eleven to hit. Eleven does not hit. All right. Anything else for seventy? Nope. Rhea steps across the fallen bones of the one that was destroyed by somebody. I don't recall who. It was Rhea. Was it? No, yeah. Rhea? Yeah, Rhea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she attacks this one twice. Uh, with using two-handed 16 hits. And she slays this one as well. Wow, <laughs> well done, Rhea. Hell Rider. They cower before you, Hell Rider. Oh. She. That was. That was a little fun. <laughs> Guess you didn't need that sword after all, Hell Rider. Guess not. <laughs> all right. Shall we see what fun awaits us inside? Indeed. Sean, do we recognize any of these statues that we're currently sort of standing among? I'm so glad somewhere? you asked that. Um, please make a... Wait a minute. Make sure you make, the, you make the proper check. Would you please say make inside? a history check. Balls. <laughs> an 11 for my history check an 11 which one are you looking at well so i'm currently standing by i believe you said it was a elf male warrior indeed this you believe to be a depiction of civic luran elf male led a force against a group of Malarkite, Malarites, excuse me, against a group of Malarites, worshippers of the 
beast god Malar. Um, they had infested the undercellar of the city hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, this particular elf was personally responsible for destroying the Temple of the Beast, which was where they were drawing their power. Sean, do any of the statues look like they've fallen prey to uh, being broken down or anything like that? Are they all standing in perfect condition? Yes, I will get to that in a moment. Just a second. Sure. There we go. Um, since you rolled an 11, you are able to identify the one next to it as well, Falkrin. Uh, the one to the north? Uh, the one to the south. Ah. Dop Husser. Dop Husser is a female dwarven warrior, one of the original riders of El Terrell. The only way that you are able to recognize this is she has a very distinctive um, uh, flail that she has at the bottom of it um, actually has the, uh, the, the part that is on the end of a chain is the shape of an anvil, the, uh, the symbol mm. of Moradin. Um, and you know that this uh, that this particular dwarf was you've heard stories that it was she was a writer of El Terrell, one of the Hell Riders. Her head has been removed and lies smashed next to. Um, and in answer oh. to your question, Yislin, the final statue is completely destroyed. This one here, Sean, all the way. Indeed. And you said that Dop's head had been completely smashed. There's like no way to set it back up. Um, it would, yeah, it's been, it's not in many, many pieces. It could be repairable. Mm. It looks like just a, maybe one of the tremors knocked it off. Did there was ah. a fault in the stone or something, and it fell and is now cracked in two or three pieces. Mm. What do you do? Me? What does anybody do? <laughs> I, say, I, I, I try to, I, I try to put Dop's head back together just because she like. Being a dwarven woman, like I, I know of her legend, and that's, I don't know, a little moment of. Oh, I can help you. I'll come over, pull out my dagger, <laughs> Thanks, and I'll Trix. read the words on it. It shrinks down into a needle. And I st st magically start sewing it back together. <laughs> with the casting of mending with your magic oh. dagger, you are able to repair the stone head of Dop Hosser. Jax, that's fantastic. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, well, Typhon told me about the magical properties of this dagger. I didn't think it'd actually be useful. <laughs> <laughs> I well, still am not sure it is. Well, I appreciate it, and it was very useful to me. Well, thank you, Jax. Oh, it's definitely it's useful. Perhaps this isn't the best use of our time at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make it back to a dagger. <laughs> Turns back would into a dagger. You, would you like to check the door then, since you're in such a rush? Uh, I'll take a listen. All right, make a perception check. Which I am terrible at. Wait, aren't you a... F 15. Um, Silence. I hear nothing. Get out of my my job. I'll open the door. All right, there's. <laughs> you just sort of move it to the side a little bit. It doesn't open on hinges. They've been completely destroyed. And I will. Hmm. I have to get a little creative with how I reveal this. So bear with me. The first thing you notice, I will say, when you open the door is. Um, the uh, damage from the outside is also in the inside. Numerous uh, stained glass windows that are smashed and the glass is lying everywhere. Uh, you also see three more of these big skeletons. I see four, Sean. Uh, excuse me. Yes, indeed, four. Um, and as you open the door and step into the room to look around, they... Fantastic. <laughs> 
stand up, up set and open. their eyes go red, and we will roll initiative again. I opened the door. Oh, there you go, Rim. You can go in now. <laughs> That's not my name. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. I have a natural 20 on my initiative. Beat that. Oh, oh no, it that was, was Cypher. Oh, for God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, my first nat 20 of the game. Still beat Falcon. <laughs> on initiative. <laughs> Sean, if you could put. Of course, yes, I, I will take care of you as I take care of the other NPCs. Oh. Uh, Stephanie. But the DM takes care of us all in the end. And Rhea. And I'm not going to put Lou on the board because she is hanging out with you. Her instructions. Persephone. What did you 15. roll? 15. 15. And Rhea. rolled an 11. And now, I believe we have everybody. At the top, we have Typhonophagus. Again. I was sitting here going like, wow, the skeletons rolled really high. And I was like, oh. and we rolled higher. So never yes. mind. Uh, yeah, like. um, um, I will step down and uh, um, place a hand on Falkrum's um, shoulder and um i will say uh dapusa will be nothing compared to falcon bone forge and um embolden you with uh protection from evil and good excellent go and stand fast and then oops not there but there <laughs> <laughs> no not there <laughs> stand fast somewhere else quickly that's it. Uh, All right. Um, that will bring us to Yislin Mizonre. Am I able to uh, bonus action hide from this position uh, behind the wall? Um, they do not have line of sight to you there. All right. Do they? Uh, the one, let's see. Mr. Red here would have line of sight. And I believe also we're going to go ahead and give it to Blue. But you would not have line of sight from green nor orange all right let me see uh that's 75 okay good then uh i will bonus action bonus bonus action bonus yourself action. yes yeah yes. see tommy gun yes. see <laughs> uh that would be an 18 mm, that beats their and passive she will pop out from behind the door and take a uh shot at green with the still drawn uh, Hellfire short bow. Excellent. Um, crit. You crit. A crit. Fantastic. Wow. Nice. Always exciting when the rogue crits. That How much damage? 16, 22 points. 22 uh, points. This, not the best rolls, but uh, yeah, 22. And then with the remainder of my movement, I will step behind the pillar behind Typhon. That was on green? That was on green. Very good. End of turn. Okay. Next up, we have Jax. I, I step down to where Falcon is without moving myself and hide. All right. For a 24. Step back up again and then shoot at red. Okay. For a natural 20. <laughs> hey, oh, my hey, goodness. Hey, hey. Hang on, Two oh, in a man. row. Hang on, Samus. I'll tell you how proper, proper like uh, sneak attack. Damage. Please do. Put me to shame. <laughs> I'm gonna roll really bad now. Oh, it's like, gonna be it's all ones. <laughs> yeah, like later we're gonna fight a dragon and roll all ones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's legit. Not bad. Thirty-four. I love this like master and apprentice Which one was rogue this on? thing we've got going on. Uh, that was on red. So on that red. was twenty-four, thirty-four damage. Thirty-four damage. Thank you. And then I step back behind Falcon again. <laughs> We could. Um, Falcon, you are next. Lovely. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and step up. Five, 10, 15. Uh, let's see here. Can I? Can I? Yeah, I can do it. Uh, so that'll be. So, sorry, I'm, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm mathing for a moment. Give no, me I understand. Take so your time. Five, 10, 15, 20 gets me into range with red. 
and I will draw and use Quietus to hopefully lay some hurt down. All right, so attack with Quietus with a 19. It comes swinging around, 19 hits. Lovely. And then, uh, so that's nine one-handed damage plus an extra D8 because he's undid. Undead indeed. So nice. That's fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> Great. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then. Um. Yeah. No. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, and that's. And that is where I'll be. Alrighty. Um, that will bring us to Silas. Ah, uh, yes. I'm going to advance and then strike the first large horned, not a minotaur creature. Rolling an 11 to hit. An 11, I'm afraid, is not a hit. With my bonus action, I'm going to feel bad and pass turn. <laughs> okay. Give myself three sad uh, damage. The red skeleton brings his great axe down upon your head, Falcron. Being AC 14, which I believe is not enough. No, it does not. Blue takes a step to the east and then charges Silas. Missing. Hitting AC 10. Missing. Missing. Let me see. Erg. I mean, my goodness, we are s- not surrounded. There's a bit of a bottleneck here. I would imagine mm. those other two might rush up and then hold their action or something like that. But <laughs> maybe they're undead and don't know such tactics. They might just rush forward and try to crowd into the space. How smart are undead anyway? It depends. Do they have reach of 30 feet? (laughs) (laughs) Both of these run forward and stand moving back and forth as if they're ready Uh, for something. Persephone, your turn. Down circle, yeah. All right. I... Ah. Oh, it's really hard to move. (laughs) I run away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's hard to move the icon on the iPad. Um, red has taken damage, correct? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, it has. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Back to the old crossbow. Every time I flip the screen back to uh, roll tw- or, uh, D&D Beyond, it makes me like reload. Oh. Yeah. With a 17 to hit. Um, that 17 does hit. Yes. Taking a whopping, oh, eight non-magical piercing. Okay. Uh, again. This was on red? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Taking four piercing damage. Very good. Anything else, Persephone? Um... I want to see if I want to move. I'm actually going to duck back out. Yeah. All right. Rhea. One, two, three. Ah, she doesn't go that way. <laughs> she will <laughs> use all of her movement to move <laughs> next to Silas. Oh, no. Oh, well. That is the end of her turn. Back to the top with Typhon. Um, Rhea ruined my plan. It's fine. Um... I will get in this time and which one seem is am I able to perceive which one's been more damaged just based yes on you could have it as as you are coming through the door you see it's Persephone's arrow strike um, from her crossbow of the one that is denoted as red twice and it looks very chipped and kind of rattly as it's standing there gotcha I will um, cast a little cantrip on that one then does 13 hit 13 does hit Oh, nice. I don't know. That dice looks super weird on my screen. It looks like it's somehow cocked on its edge. It's weird. But uh, that'll be 11 points of necrotic damage. 
it f- crumbles into dust as your necrotic energy wraps around the, the uh, skeleton and takes bits and pieces of it, of, of it away as if it has been worn away by the sands of time. Okay. Cool. And that will bring us to Islin Mizonre. All right. I'm going to bonus action hide behind the pillar, which I could not do last turn. Uh, 16. And I will step forward uh, and I will attack uh, green from this vantage point. Very well. Twenty-five is a hit. All right, twenty-five, four, fourteen points. Very good. And I will run back behind the pillar. There he could. Um, that will bring us to Jax. Um, Jax will sneak up, hide first. Oh, da, 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 for a stealth. Twenty-six. Step in. 5, 10, 15 feet moving. And I will shoot the longbow at a 25 to hit. Mm-hmm. For a 23 points of damage on blue. Alright. And then I will step back out. Um, I'm going to ask you to repeat that in just a second. I'm taking care of some other things here for the moment. All right. Can you please repeat that on blue, you said? On blue, sir. Yes. And how much damage was it? 23. 23. Thank you. Very good. That will be the end of Jax's turn, which brings us to Falkron. All right, as I see the red minotaur skeleton crumble, uh, I immediately turn my attention to, I believe it's blue standing next to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and swing, Quietus. And with a 25 to hit. That's a hit. Doing 13 one-handed damage. I will then add my D8 because he's undeady. And he gets another eight added on to that. Woo-hoo. Very nice. Land. Quietus, you feel Quietus quivering with excitement as you bring it down. And it just makes a nice clarion call as it carves through the mm. bones of the skeleton. That was another eight, you say? Yeah, that was 21. Magical. Fantastico. Diddy damage. Very good. Anything else from you, Falkron? Um, I'm going to go ahead and... One second. Uh... I have all these wonderful bonus skills uh, that I never get to try out. So I'm going to go ahead and cast, uh, with as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary onto uh, Silas, who is next to me. Okay. Uh, and so that... Basically, it's going to ward him against any attacks. Uh, so the Minotaur is going to have to make a wisdom save to try to attack him. Very good. So, Silas, it is your turn. Well, I suppose I'll just attack the one right in front of me. Assuming Ward drops. Blue is there. Ward disappears as you attack. Blue I can't is just still stand there and take a shot. Um, oh, I didn't realize that he loses it when he makes an attack. Well, there it's I okay. Go. I, I felt blessed, and then I didn't. I'm used yeah. to that feeling. That's Phil Silas, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good old. <laughs> <Silas>. <laughs> More sad damage. <laughs> 15 to hit. 15 to hit. Excellent. 15 is a hit. Doing 12 points of magic damage. Excellent. Bits and pieces of it are flying everywhere. But now That's it is enough. his turn. He attacks you with its great axe. Hitting AC 23, 14 points of slashing. Green lost its last turn. It charges forward, attacking Falkron with a gore attack as it lowers its head, hitting AC 9. Does not hit. Does not hit. And then it steps away, taking attacks of opportunity from whoever wishes to make one. Hot dog. Will do. Did Typhon want to make an opportunity? Comment? No. (laughs) (laughs) Abiding, Abiding remark, perhaps? 
All right. Falcon uh, rolls a 22. That's to a hit. hit. With 13 one handed damage. Very good. And then, Sean, for the opportunity attack, do I get the extra D? Yep, you do. All right, then. By God, I'll roll. I love my. And for seven. Rushing it. Oh, my God. Another 20 damage from Quietus. Excellent. Quietus is winning. Uh, Oh, I haven't used it in so long. It's just like. Steps away. I was made for. This one steps forward and attacks you with its great axe. Did, did my attack of opportunity hit? I'm sorry, Silas. I didn't see that you rolled one, but you did. 16 did hit. Six points. Six points of damage. Thank yeah. you very much. Sorry about that, Silas. Uh, Orange steps forward and he hits AC 11 with its great axe. I believe that is a miss. Uh, to... to either of you. No, no. Yeah, it doesn't hit me. Cool. That will bring us to <laughs> neat. <laughs> awesome. That will bring us to the uh, no to Persephone. Okay. Uh, popping back in again, and I'll go after Blue with the crossbow. Hun crit. Nice roll. What? 13. Mm. Very good. And I'm assuming he's still up, so I'm going to hit which, him again. Which one did With you an, attack? Uh, blue. Blue Blue is still up. And I just, I'm not lying, I just critted again. Amazing! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Has never happened ever. Um, <laughs> with a whopping eight points of damage, but still... still. <laughs> Uh, I looked feels, awesome. How much damage was it? Critically, yeah. Eight. 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 Total? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, in, in addition to your previous attack. Oh, uh, what was my last one? Thirteen? Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. Eight. So uh, I was, I was crumbles, waiting for him to say eight is it, enough. <laughs> it crumbles into a thousand pieces falling at Rhea's feet. As she's getting ready to attack, she steps forward over the crumbled pieces and attacks orange. Mm. Guys are kicking butt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spoke to you soon. Um, so that's a nine. <laughs> but a 17 hits. Doing 11 points of slashing. Very nice. And that is the end of Rhea's turn. Um, and we will go back to the top of the order. However, as we do, there's a sound that comes from outside I believe that Jax and um, Rim are the only ones who are out at the moment but you all hear the sound as appearing from each one of these pillars shadowy amorphous creatures manifest oh Well, that sucks. Some of them, uh, you look grim. Some of them have just look like moving pieces of shadow, barely registering as humanoid at all. The others uh, have a purplish hue with white glowing energy coming from a skull face and hair that is um, sticking out behind them and waving in some sort of unseen air. Is it just the one? No, I'm trying to describe while I reveal. And then, and then, Sean, for those of us who have been fighting, who have fought with the end before, like, do we recognize these sort of whales or? Uh, make a religion check. Uh, I sh- certainly shall. With my religion of 19. Uh, these are, uh, those are the sounds of undead unmistakably. Yeah. Um, in order to know exactly what they are, you will have need to have encountered them before. I don't think you have. Okay. Okay. Well, I think things just got more interesting. Ah, <sighs> well, we're in a graveyard, so mm. this is the type of scary be- thing that could turn your hair white. <laughs> 
I apologize for how long this has taken because of uh, the way I have sh- various things here. I can't just. We're chatting. Don't interrupt long. us. <laughs> no worries. We're not going to ghost on you. Uh, uh, we are. For that, you die first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Just take a moment to acknowledge everybody. Hey, Manx works. Hey, Rico. Different people being active in the chat. Is I saw. Uh, Pixie Quinn had to go away a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah. Different people. Ugg Luck left earlier. But um, those people that are still out there, um, Rico is waving his go team undead. He's rooting for the other team. He's, oh, of course he is. Uh, it hits um, right there. It's in black and white or white oh, and black and orange. Really. We are ready uh, to resume. Goody. Uh, mm-hmm. Typhoon. Uh, I would be aware of this happening. Yes, a threat has made itself known to you. Gotcha. From outside. I'm going to then a um, little worried about my drow friend here. Head out and I will move. Oops, not there. Not there either. Right up and, <laughs> um, nope, nope. and uh, extend my hand and have fire burst forth in a 15 foot cone, but I think I'll just plaster it against the wall and then hit in sort of a straight 15 foot line ahead. Does that make sense? It does. I have a template, right? You do. Could I use that? Yes, that would be very helpful. Um, what am I looking for it here? Goes through the wall and hits Lulu. I don't. I don't see it. <laughs> what is the spell? Uh, uh, burning hands. Did I not make one for burning hands? It's the same as breath weapon, right? Yeah, so. just use breath weapon. That's probably what I was thinking. I have no control over breath weapon, so. Really? <laughs> 15 feet, you say? That's the sound of your breath weapon. That's yes, exactly it. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. Oh. I'm coming on to the board with 15 feet of cone. Everybody stand back. It's the cones of Dunshire. So oh where God. would you like this cone to go? Punishing you. Um, show to sort of here, like this. Very well. That definitely hits both of them. I think he was... Yeah. Like that. There we go. Angled differently, but yes, indeed. Yeah. Angled differently. So I see what you're saying. So you just, you, you just, I see you, you plastered against the wall like that, and sort of bank the flame off the wall so that it splashes yeah. over them as a ricochet. Yeah, yeah cool. and I get another D6 of damage because of that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sure you do. <laughs> uh, so they have to make Thank deck saves, too. correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Rough weapon parkour. <sighs> Hmm. Okay, this is fire, correct? Correct. All right, so I've got a 19 from the one that is dark and incorporeal. Gross. And <laughs> okay. And I have a Nineteen from the one that is purple and crazy looking. Oh, jeez. Mm. DM. So, yes, sir. That other one here has literally just appeared on the map for me. It wasn't there before. Okay. That's yeah, correct. a bunch just appeared for me yeah. too. Well, he he did say that they came out of all the. Pillars. Yeah, yeah, but obviously right. I, I saw three of them, but this one here wasn't there. But now the rest of them have. I just wanted to say all, if, I, if that would have come all out. All of the pillars have all of the pillars have had one. They've all just gorged, just gorged something. Jax would have that seen that. Mistake. Literally come out and obviously it ends its turn. And we go, nope, and then left. Has not had its turn yet. This was just them revealing. Would reveal uh, their turn then, or? So you haven't actually had your turn yet. So you moved no, there at the beginning. Ah, you used a reaction. Got it. Yeah, I can use a yep. bit of reaction to move away without provoking. And he does not get an attack of opportunity? No. Ah, scout. Do I have that? Yep. No, nope. that's a scout thing. Darn. Do I... <laughs> right, end. So put cool. yourself where you want to be. Uh, I don't want 15. that. 20. I'll just go to something like that for now. Very yep. good. All right. <laughs> All right. So they, they both saved. Do they still take damage? Yes, half. That's what I thought. 
<clears throat> eight damage. All right. The fire blasts up against the wall, and both of these creatures move incorporeally out of the way. One of them actually goes into the wall briefly and comes back. The fire does still look over them, but no damage seems to have been done. Zero. They're immune. Zero. Not immune. They are resistant, and they made their saves. Oh, so they will take half damage of what? Yeah. So half and half. Got got it. So not they're not immune. Two they damage. take half and half. So total of four? <clears throat> Two. Yes. Oh, yeah, four, 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 yeah. I do math. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of math to do. I do math like jacks. About as well as I do windows, so don't worry about yeah, it. <laughs> what about you? Okay. I'm pretty good at doors when I'm under pressure. I think we are done with Typhon's turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Islin. Uh, I can bonus action. Uh, action. I can't speak tonight. Uh, I can bonus action disengage. Correct. Is that correct? All right. Yep. Then uh, I'm going to do that. And as I pass uh, by Typhon, I just breathe very quickly. My hero. And I uh, continue inside. <laughs> um, that's the end of my movement. And I will attack uh, Orange. Very now, good. Just you do not get. A, you do not get. Um advantage because you're not hidden but you would have sneak attack sneak because attack. he's engaged with allies supposedly 25 is a hit damage is crap tonight 13 very good that's not bad all damage. the damage dice go to falcon that's not bad damage uh, you remember you're only like you've only got a 1d6 are you 2d6 uh no it is 1d6 okay uh, that's 2d6, 2D6 on sneak here. attack yeah that's, uh, that's the end of my turn. Very good. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. That will bring us to Jax. I will move 20 feet between Falcon's legs and try to stab at the... Uh, Go for it. Who's my flip with my magic needle? Oh. I missed. Oh. Mm, the one, I'm afraid, is a miss. And then, um, no matter what your bonus is. Goodness. Yeah. Uh, so that was 20, and then I disengage to there. Uh, so five, Very 10, good. 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm disengaging to there. Alrighty. Uh, that's the end of Jack's turn. Back to yep. Falkron. All right. Let's see if we can uh, keep this quietus going. So nah. I'll swing again onto orange this time. And that's a 13 to hit. 13 is a hit. Fantastic. That'll do 10 damage and then bonus, bonus undead ouchies. Yep. It, oh, oh. All right, so 11. Uh, 11 total to... To orange. To orange. All right. And then have... So, and then we've, we've all heard the wail, and we know it's coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, good. Anything else, Falkron? <laughs> no, nope. Nope. Uh, okay. I've done the whale sound. I'm good. Very good. Silas. Just going to step through Rhea's space. And even though I don't get any sort of bonus for flanking, I would it would be a good battle kind of thing to do. And take an attack with the glaive on that guy, rolling a 20 to hit. All right, that's a hit. And doing seven magic damage. Seven magic on damage. that particular baddie. Very good. Anything else, Silas? That's it. All right, that'll bring us to... Okay. Mr. Shadow. Let's see. One moment, my friends. All right, there we go. One, two. This dark creature creeps its way. You see a smoky hand creep 
around this broken stained glass window and you see shadows sort of moving past the pieces that still remain, giving uh, the eyes of this one warrior that looks like it's uh, defending against some vile creature. The eyes in that warrior seem to move and it looks and glares at you malevolently, Silas, and it creeps into the room and it attacks. It reaches out with a 21 to hit. Take four necrotic damage and your strength is reduced by <gasps> one point. Ooh, how do I track that on a D&D card? That's a um, good question. You can go to... Uh, where about is it? I can't remember. Is it conditions? No. I, I clicked on it. I clicked on the score, and I've got other modifier and override score. There you go. Yeah. So if I do a minus one, that does it. Yep. Good deal. Uh, never done this that before. Other creature comes through the other window, and it goes through the body of the Minotaur that is still standing and fighting, and lands in the space next to Falcron. It can actually squeeze into that little space it's amorphous it's sort of you see there's part of the sh this shadow like creature that's looming up the wall and looming over you and then towards at, at uh, eye level there are hands grasping for you but it cannot attack because it moved too far this one comes in through here and attacks persephone no yes Hitting AC mm -hmm. three. Yeah. AC eight. Oh, oh does not hit. So one moment here. While we are here. That's what I sound like. <laughs> sort of a ghostly duck sound. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Persephone's actually wildly afraid this of ducks. This is what so is attacking like a ghost you. Duck. Oh no. Mm -mm. This creature made of living shadow. Anybody got a flashlight? Oh, yeah. That will bring us to Persephone. Well. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. We'll bring us to the skeletons. Ah, so sorry. Got a okay. lot going on here, people. Oh. Okay, here we go. No, I think we could just right to yeah. jump right to Persephone. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> All right. So They're going to fight the shadows. It's going to be great. Not, so you, uh, the one you... standing in front of standing in front of Falgren attacks Falgren with its great axe. You say that the numpad AC... messed him up. Hmm? You say the numpad messed your friend up with the voice changer. Yeah, that's it, right. I take it. I just did that to me. Did I sound like a chipmunk? You did. So misses these these uh, giant creatures. They're coming at you hard, Falgren, but. There's something about your, uh, you feel like, oh, you were meant to fight these things. The one up. that's standing over here runs at Silas, trying to gore him. Hitting AC 14, misses. And that will bring us to Persephone. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'm really scared of that thing that's right in front of me. And I really don't think that it's going to care about my rapier. Um, all right, I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Dissonant Whispers? What is the damage that Dissonant Whispers does? It takes a wisdom save 15. Um, and I'm sorry, you said the damage it does? Roll to four, yep. I'm trying to make it um, roll here on my. Oh, I'll just do it myself. Um, 3d6. What type of damage, Persephone? Sorry. Um, Psychic. Psychic damage. All right. All right. Roll it. Uh, 
10, 11. 11. Very good. And they do get to do a wisdom save. No, he failed it. He rolled a four. Okay. Okay. 11, did that 11 look- psychic damage. Wow. Did okay. that look like it hurt? Yes. You see the the whisper comes out and you, as the, the sound comes from your instrument and runs into it, it sort of echoes and vibrates and splits out of the way, trying to get away from the vibration. And as it does, you see bits and pieces of it being torn away and turning into nothingness. That seemed to hurt it a lot, actually. I love it. Okay, that's me. Rhea attacks Orange. Two-handed with her long sword, hitting AC 17, which is a hit, and AC 15, which is a hit. So that is 19 points of damage. It is still up, but barely. That is the end of her turn. And last but not least, come the rest of the players to tonight's little dance. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, yes. Somebody talk more? The one in front of you that you've just hit with the burning hands attacks you, uh, Typhon. Oh, so the the other three who hadn't uh, moved yet are four. It's AC 15. We'll just miss. Fantastic. Phew. It's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> Neat. So cool. So cool. Um, coming in through the wall and attacking Rhea, this one steps. Hitting AC 18. 11 oh. necrotic damage. She needs to make constitution save. Come on, Rhea. Come on, Rhea. You rolled a four. Oh, no, Rhea. What is her constitution bonus? I don't remember. It's plus five. It's plus two, so it's six total, which does oh. not succeed. So. She screams out in agony as this necrotic energy ripples through her and you can see that the veins in her neck and her arms begin to pulsate and turn a sickly dark color and she wavers and almost drops her sword. No, no, no. There we go. Um, Let's see here. So many things open. Let me clear off my cluttered desk here. I'm so sorry, guys. There was one more that I did not no! manage to get onto the right <laughs> thing. So, one, two, three. Sorry. He moves through the wall and attacks. Because we're not dying fast enough, apparently. He attacks Silas. Let's see here. Reaches out with its hand, hits AC eight, misses. Another one down. Dodge out of the way. This final one, for those of you who are still looking, goes around the corner and disappears. That is the end of that round. We're back to the top with Typhon. Cool, so this one in front of me, I guess I will just have, oh, oh, how about I use my little invisible imp to distract things? How about that? All right, it is, imp comes down and this creature reaches out and tries to grab it only to find that it is out of reach. And I will have him descend um, and, oh, did he attack him even though he's invisible moving past? Mm. No, I forgot he was invisible. No, um, I was just flavor to help got with it, the... Uh, got it. 
Okay, well, he'll use help action. I will use shocking grasp. Very good. Uh, whoops, I forgot to toggle. Uh, 24 to hit. 24 hits. Um, that will be nine points of lightning damage. Halved to four. Gotcha. Is this that too? It's a bummer. And I will move. Can I move through this thing since it's non corporeal? Can I just run through it? The shadow is not actually non corporeal, it is amorphous. Gotcha. Well, that doesn't matter. One, two. And I don't think you can actually run through, even though they're non corporeal, I don't know that you can yeah. run through enemy spaces. I think that's just a, a hard no. You cannot yeah. move through enemy spaces. It's maybe swarms I'm thinking of or something. So I'll have to double check that, but yeah, I'm going to say no for now. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I'll move to there in that case. Okay. Leave Mr. Imp to watch up here. Very good. Anything else, Typhon? Uh, nope. Islin. Uh, Islin is going to uh, step up here and bonus action hide. And then uh, should she succeed, she's going to... Oh! Wait. 27 for self and then you are hiding from the minotaurs I that is it. correct yes. yes all right that is you are definitely hidden uh i will come back out and uh shoot orange with my crossbow short short bow something bow all the bows that is a hit bow bow 13 and it crumbles to dust nice and uh I will kind of move. No, I'll stay. I'll stay here. This is fine. All right, uh, Jax. Um, Jax will move twenty foot to there and stab the one attacking Persephone. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirty twenty. Twenty is a hit. That'll be more natural. Is it plus two for flanking? Nope. It's 16, actually 21. 16 magical damage. 16 magical damage. It <laughs> disappears into nothingness. Oh, that was easy. And then I... Thanks. Uh, 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 so I'll move 20 for there. And then 5, 10, underneath Persephone, and bonus action hide. <laughs> Hiding... Between her legs between her legs. I think you're confused with halflings that can hide with... Um, I'm hiding from... Please, yeah, yeah. You can move in her space, but... Uh, no, I mean, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. because... Got it. All right. All right. Fair enough. Got it. You are hiding. 29. 29. If they move in, they will see you because you do not. You will not have anything blocking your line of sight from them. Yeah. Just but, so you know. you know. If they were like respectful ghosts, they'd come through the door. Right. Um, that will bring us to Falkron. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on dead. Boing! So, uh, anything within 30 feet of me that can hear or see me mm -hmm. needs to make a wisdom saving throw. And that'll be, so I think that's like starting with this fine fellow right there. 14 on the one right next to you. All right. Keep track of these, please. You got it. 14 on the one that is outside. Okay. Because he can hear you. All right. Both of those are fails. All right. Uh, this the shadow that is all the way at the top. Is it able to? Is it out it, of the range? It, it is too far away. Yeah, that's, that's too far out away. Top okay. Of my range. So we'll go to the sucker who's there. Ten is a fail. Fail. Nine is a fail. Oh, nice. Uh, yes. And the last skeleton is a fail. Okay. Oh they my all have gosh! To immediately run, correct? Or no, is it so, on their turn? So all of the specters and the I think the shadows, they're dead. Whoa. Because it's destroy undead at half, I think. And so the only thing left is the skeleton which runs. So re tell me that again. So they're 
So I'm currently uh, my feet. So my my current uh, my my current level oh, my, is my level of uh, of destroy undead is uh, critic rating. Uh, sorry, the CR challenge rating is uh, a half or lower. Any undead yep. that fails its saving throw on turn undead instantly is destroyed if it's lower than the threshold for your level. Yeah, but right, they're not challenge your... rating half. Yeah, they're not challenge rating half. Oh, who's the... not? Oh, oh. I'm guessing the shadows oh. are quite high. The shadow might be. Let me just check. Oh, all right. All right. I was like, oh, I hope they're smaller. That's usually a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you're yes. thinking half your level, but it's it's CR half. The yeah, shadows yeah. are destroyed. Okay, okay. So that shadow's destroyed. Yes. That shadow's destroyed. However, okay. everything else is still everything else, alive. Yeah. So okay, speak. well then everything else just needs to... Let's see here. They run uh, on their turn. Must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can. Very good. Yes. Please give me a description of this turn undead. Oh yeah. So as soon as like I like I'm, I'm hearing the sh the sounds of my friends like crying out in pain and Rhea almost dropping her weapon as she like she's just like brought low by this thing and I'm just like no no and then I'm like and then so like you see me like light up quietus and it's just like on this like almost he man esque sort of by the power and but it's just like <laughs> literally you mean like, Shira oh. obviously yeah exactly uh, so. So that like lights up quietus and then I bring it down and it's it's that same like shining ring that you heard earlier when I just nailed that shot on that minotaur. It just it's like and then like the shock wave from that just ripples through the tomb and as awesome. it just everything else just goes and like the shadow is gone and then everything else just goes flying back through the walls. Yes. I love it. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Um very good. Well, you're over there. Um, just a moment. There we go. Reveal areas. Reveal areas. While you're over there, um, Rim, you are able to see further down to the edge of the hall there. Just going to show that there. We'll describe it in a moment. Maybe we'll that is the your turn, Falcon. That will bring us to Man, Silas. Uh, it's obvious everything is uh, freaking out running. Um, si uh, Valgren did a very she's impressive right, she's display. Right next yeah, you, so. it's and, and she's done it before, so <laughs> I'm familiar would, with it. I, yeah. I used yeah. to know it. It's a trip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to get. Uh, mm, they are in a. I'm going to hold my action. All right. Anything that attacks within my range, any enemy that attacks within the range of my weapon, I will strike. Very good. Um, I want to point out that by choosing that as your reaction, you will not be able to use a reaction as a <laughs> attack of opportunity. Correct. Very good. All right. The remaining shadow... One, two, three, four, five, six... Comes in... And attacks Persephone. She's the first one. Oh, so let's see here. Reaches out for your strength. 16. Hits. 11 oh. points of necrotic damage. And your maximum strength reduces by four. Very good. Rude. Indeed. That is the end of its turn. The Minotaur skeleton begins to run. Um, Silas, you're the only one in range who can attack it, but you are... One, two, three, four. It moves to here. Just turns completely around and charges at the wall and begins scraping at it, trying desperately to move this... Uh, profanely animated form away from the holy light that is emanating from Falkron. Um, both the uh, specters also pass through the wall. Rhea makes an attack of opportunity. Um, I believe that hits. Yes. 
but it doesn't seem to do very much damage. Oh. All right, one by one, one by one. That's right. And it's see. One, two. It takes its turn. It is booking it. It's going to actually make it off the map. Uh, so, Sean, if it gets hit, does that mean it breaks? I, oh, it does. It does mean that. Sorry, guys. This one is booking it, and it will make it off the map. Um, but I had it go too soon. Never mind. This is why I gave up my reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. They are. It's not their turn. It was just the Minotaur's turn. So we will go back. Oh my God, this is complicated. Erg. Shadow went. Minotaur went. Persephone, it's your turn. All right. I am having terrible trouble keeping that not knocked over. Um, <laughs> come on, reload. It's like a live uh, action cam. You there's have a still, shadow there, right I'm in sorry. front of you. I can't see the roll 20 right now, but there's there's that shadow right in front of me, right? Indeed. Yep. All right. So I'm going to do that dissonant whisper thing again, because that worked mm -hmm. pretty down in a while. Uh, so that's going to be... Wisdom again, right? Yep. Roll the 12. Uh, fail, so it right. take nine uh, psychic damage. Nine psychic. Again, the shadow tries to ripple around the uh, sonic energy coming out of you, and as it does, bits and pieces get carried away into nothingness. Anything else, Persephone? That's all I got. Now Rhea attacks, and she did her hit, 12 points of slashing against this one, which stays where it is because it is the broken. But she takes another attack. Maybe she can finish it off. Mm, with an eight, she misses. Now, the specter that she just struck attacks her. With 21 doing 15 necrotic. Yikes. And four points of strength damage. So that's five total for her. Um, the one that is standing next to Silas goes to leave. And because Rhea has already used her attack of opportunity, she can't again. So it actually is able to leave and it does get off well, the board. She hasn't actually used her attack of opportunity. No, she did as the specter. Yeah, but it was her go before the specter. So she hit it. She, she would now at this point. Yeah, she would now have a... An attack of opportunity. It, she didn't get an attack of opportunity until it tried to run I away. See. It tried okay. to run away early. So now Got it tries it. to run away. She strikes it. She hits it. No, then so it I, 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 thank you. I used her strike to. I yeah. used her strike to attack the other one. Yeah, and then the other one left, and now she gets an attack so, of opportunity. Now she gets attack of opportunity. So she strikes the one that is trying to leave. She hits. She does <laughs> that much damage. So it sticks around. And attacks, I guess. And attacks. It, it had well, it had intended to use two movements. It began its dash action. Does that get interrupted? Does it? <laughs> <laughs> its movement gets interrupted, and it some... moves back, and then it attacks. Just because we want to keep and things it attacks, interesting. I'm sure it attacks her, not me. Because no, it attacks like you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Um, hitting AC 15. That's a miss. All right. But my held action. Ah, indeed. But if any creature within my reach attacked, I get to attack it. So both of those creatures are in your reach. Which one would you like uh, to have The one that attacked. Okay. I, I specified it, if a creature attacks. So well, if, oh, you didn't say attack you. You said if it attacks. If it attacks. So it attacks you have a choice me, someone on else, either one. Yeah. But only one of them actually attacked. No, both of them did. Oh, they both did? Rhea attacked. Used, Rhea used her turn to attack the one that is in front of her. So it attacked her back. And then she used her reaction to attack the one that was trying to flee, and it came back and attacked you. Oh, uh, okay. 
So which one do you wish to attack? Wait, she used her reaction. It's complicated. It was, it was, it was very complicated, okay. but this, this is what happened. She, okay. Both Pick of one. them are there. <laughs> Choose one. The one red. Red. Okay. 12 to hit, miss. 12 is not a miss. Oh, it is. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Nine, Nine points, points magic. Slashing. All right. All done. You cleave through it. It splits, and you see just the barest signs of a wound appearing, as you would expect if it were an actual corporeal creature. But then the mystic and uh, diaphanous uh, form of it returns. Um, and the final specter, who failed, this one runs, and nobody touches it, and it leaves the board. <laughs> Nobody could touch it. Goes on the other side of the. I mean, it goes past your imp. What do you think? Nah, nah. Okay, <laughs> right. Now we're back to the top of the order. Help action. Repeat. Well, yeah. Repeat. Shocking grasp. I'm afraid a natural one. Does not I guess succeed. I had the help action. Thankfully. Uh, indeed. Cool. Wow. Yeah, it's just oh, it's not me that did it this time. <laughs> oh, that's two natural ones. Very unfortunate. That's um, three weeks anything in else, Typhon? Nope. That's All right. Three weeks in a row we've seen double one. Islin Mizonre. Um, can I break line of sight with the shade if I move? My goodness, I'm having delay issues. One, two, three. Um, can you draw a straight line from one corner of your square to one corner of its square without encountering an obstacle? I'm going to have to do it from here, I think. Yes. Okay. Press up against the wall and I will... Uh... Mm. No? Yeah, no, that, that's fine. That's just, fine. Yeah. Um, so bonus action hide there for 13. Mm-hmm. Just then... a second. Let me see here. Sure. That is a success. And then I will come back out and use my short bow. Wow. That is a crit. That is a crit. Uh, this arrow comes streaking past you, Typhon, and there's a faintest smell of brimstone as the shadow dissipates and the arrow standing, st is sticking there and then falls onto the ground. 32 damage. That was massive damage. It was an amazing amount of damage. Wow. Enough to kill several uh, shadows. Um, anything else, Islan? Uh No, I think I'm going to stay put. Okay. Jax. Uh, Jax will run at the ones from underneath for Stephanie's legs. Um, run at that one. I'm going to hit someone for real. Or oh, maybe not. Uh, I'm a class 12. 12 is a hit. Really? 6, Ooh. 7, 18 damage. Six, no, There's six, a 16 damage. That fades into nothingness as this creature is no more. <laughs> I'll just run off. I'll run off back. Then we're up to Falkron. All right, I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to, well, okay, I'm attempting to move myself, but I'm getting a little bit of lag. So uh, I'm putting myself right in between Rhea uh, and the wall there. Got it. To that I've moved you. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get Quietus back into the action. So Quietus takes a swing and, oh, come on, baby. It's facing 15. Yep. Yes. 13 one handed damage. And it does radiant damage too, right? It sure does. But well, let me double check that so I'm not lying to you. Uh, <laughs> you need to roll another D8. Slashing. Um, so it does the D8, and then the creature has disadvantage on saving throws against effects that turn undead until the start of your next turn. But it, I don't. It doesn't see, say anything about radiant. Okay, I don't how see much radiant damage? On a, so, uh, so thirteen for the first hit, and then I get the extra D8, which is okay. Fourteen. So fourteen total damage there. <laughs> this one explodes in a cloud of radiant energy, and you feel quietus. <laughs> hum in satisfaction that is the end of your turn now look at Ray and say get up Hellrider 
And Silas, one, two, three, four, five, six, charges forward and holds an action. I believe all of the shadows are dead. We have one Minotaur skeleton left. He is currently trying to get away. I am going to say that with another round of combat, there is no way it will survive because it only has five hit points left. So we will say <laughs> that you have dispatched it. All of the enemies are dead. Combat is over. That's not copyrighted, is it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think if you sing it, it's fine. Oh, okay. yeah, that's fine. Especially if you sing it badly. badly. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Then it's a parody. Uh, 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 <laughs> me to sing it. Okay. Job team. Hey, um, so everybody's lost strength. That's not good. Like, yeah, Sean, do we feel any of that come back? You do not. How do, but uh, I lost four points of strength. <laughs> um, Lulu comes out. She's like, oh, are you okay? I don't feel great. Maybe next time I can help. I think that'd be wise. <laughs> oh. that I think I could have really helped there. It's true. Okay. Well, let's make sure everyone else is all right. Lulu, is there anything you can do? Oh, she, I don't know if she can see me or hear me. She's probably talking. Yeah, you can all convene. Yeah. Lulu, is there anything you can do to to help with this or reverse the effects? No, no, I, I feel like I should be able to, but I, I can't. I'm sorry. No, it's all, no, it's all right. It's all right. But you can't, Falcon. But, but if everybody just maybe comes close together and holds on to each other, we'll, we'll feel better. <laughs> Eastland rolls her eyes a little bit. That is a good idea, Lulu. Thank Looking you, Eastland. <laughs> <laughs> you can cure it. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm I, I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Jack. So I'm, I'm looking through all my, <laughs> my, my tricks, and I'm like, I can't. Lesser restoration. <laughs> I don't think. Nope. Lesser it, doesn't. It used lesser to. doesn't. No. Lesser restoration does not handle it. Yeah, um, that's the restoration kind of sucks. <laughs> right it really actually kind of sucks. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it really does. And I've been right. I've been right there with you, Jade, as a cleric a couple of times. I've been like, I can fix this with lesser restoration. And it's no. I it, mean, it used it, to be obviously in other D&D. Like, yeah. I, you know, oh, see, I got third edition. I got really excited because I was like, I was like, oh, no, it says I can do a disease or a one condition. And it's just like the conditions can only be. And I was like, oh, what? Yeah. Right. So if anyone's blind, deaf, paralyzed, or poisoned. Uh, so this okay, area yeah, that you're in right now, that. this was once a beautiful, beautiful area of this chapel, but now it is littered with splintered furniture, broken stained glass. Um, all the windows have been smashed. Um, one remains intact, although it is fallen whole to the floor. It depicts a representation of the god Torm, placing a helmet upon a man kneeling before him. The helmet is golden. Where is that window, Sean? It is... Hmm. Here. Okay, cool. So... Um, I... Stealthy. Yeah, so Falcon's definitely look behind his curtain. I'm assuming it's a curtain. It is a curtain, indeed. I will slowly and stealthily look behind the curtain. Make a stealth check. 23. You see... Death. Death. <laughs> I will go ahead and reveal all of this now. 
There are three curtained archways in this room connecting the chamber to the other areas of the ch chapel. And there are shattered wardrobes. There's a dresser that is open and been rifled through. Uh, smashed mirrors. Uh, this suggests that this was once an area where priests uh, put on vestments and prepared to receive mourners and deal with interment of the dead. Doesn't seem to be dwarven build, little oblong. Yes. <laughs> There's also a, like, a, a set of stairs spiraling down below the floor. Could have been. I could have been drunk, you know, dwarves. Yeah. Um, Woo! Lulu says. And she flies around the other side. <laughs> Sean, do I recognize this this image that I'm looking at with Torm and the golden helmet? Coming um, well, it's obviously Torm. Um, you recognize some of the iconography as well as the weaponry. Um, you don't even need to roll for that one. Um, but as far as what else it could uh, depict, make a religion check. Eleven. At eleven is enough. Um, oh yay! This is uh, there is a heroine. Um, you can't recall the exact details, but there was apparently at some point in the past uh, a religious figure of Fortorum that wished to speak with him directly and prayed and prayed and prayed and was gifted with some sort of artifact that allowed this to happen. And as you are looking at this and recalling it, it clicks in your mind that this might be what Uldar Ravenguard is seeking in coming to this cemetery. Mm, okay. Do I, do, do I recall the name of the item at all, Sean? You do not, just... not with that role, unfortunately. Okay, okay. okay. I say, this this could be it. This this could be the relic that they seek. Silas, um, do you do you recall uh, this the legend of Torm? There was a oh I can never remember their names. There's just so many of them. Uh, there was a uh, a saint of his that, that wished to to speak to him, and there was a helm that he he gifted her. DM can uh, I roll gifted him. Gifted him. Sorry. Gifted him. Sorry. You may roll religion. Come on, former paladin hood. 16. 16. Excellent. This is Lanish Fogel. And the item being bestowed upon him is the helm of Torm's sight. Well, obviously, this is Lanish Vogel, and that's the helm of Torm's sight. Okay, okay don't. <laughs> don't, don't, do, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't do that. Elf, explain to me. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I was inhabited by the spirit of Typhon. He's uh, <laughs> taking the cue from Islin to possess people. Yeah, that's not possible. He's been far too quiet. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with. We truly are. Yeah, that's hell. Persephone's line. No. <laughs> uh, okay. No, uh, I explained okay. to Falkrin, uh that I do indeed recall that legend, and I mentioned the name of the helm. And uh, Helm and Torn, it's very confusing. The helmet. Um, and uh, um, hopefully that will mean something. Um, yes, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, any chance. Um, uh, myself or Falcon could um, recall if we had seen this image recently outside recently um, no uh, this particular image is definitely not one of the ones that is the the the, the two that Falkran mentioned and recognized uh, the one thing they had in common is they were both very important in the history of El Torel Lanish Fogel is important in the history of um, worship of Torm. So this would be, this is a legend that is known throughout uh, the offices. I wonder if of... Rhea would know anything about this. Well, but but clearly this, I mean, this hell must have been the relic that Ravengar was seeking. Do you think it... 
Rhea Thank looks you. at such she shrugs, she says, I, I don't. No. It, uh, what, what was behind the curtains? I, I didn't see. Stairs. Oh, exciting. Jack's heard Lulu get excited, so he ran around to see what she's getting excited about. All right. She is flying around looking at a smashed um, stained glass window that depicts a golden-haired godlike figure with sun behind him streaming out before it gets cut off by the broken glass, standing amongst fallen soldiers and holding up his hand, guiding spirits away from the bodies and into what you could only assume must have been some sort of heavenly depiction, but it is now smashed. But she is flying and looking up at this depiction of this creature and coming down, getting different perspectives and comes over and spins around. Isn't it amazing? Oh, yes. I wonder if I can fix it. Oh, that'd be really very good. Nine hours later. (laughs) (laughs) How long is this going to take? I'll be here a week. Looks like we're going to get another long rest in, huh? Is that? Yeah, okay. (laughs) That'd be two days gone. Should we... Should we check upstairs? I search within the glass. Do you know who this is? No. Mm, this is Lathander. Lathander, the Morning Lord. You don't know who this is? Well, no, I'm a goblin. Oh, he's so amazing. Oh, he's dead. Tell us about him, Lulu. Well, mm, looks like a bit of glass. He's, um, he's a god of. Uh, he's a god. He's a god of creativity. And uh, dawn, mm, renewal, mm, the sun, glass. definitely the sun. Hmm? And shattered glass. No, no, that's not one of them. Vitality, he's, he's wonderful. And he's here. Have you met him? He's here? Mm, he's watching us. Well, Can he help us? Way. Yes, yes, yes! And he, she comes and flies around you, Persephone, and she says, You should pray. I don't know how to. I, I look to Falcron to say, Can you help me? Uh, I will gladly aid anyone. Should she get a wish to try to talk to the gods? Lulu. What is the name of this god again? The you don't know the thunder? Lathander Morning Lord is it's pretty popular in the realms. That might be a low yeah. DC check. Very DC, very low DC. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a dwarf who had been underground their entire life would not know Lathander, but would probably still have heard reference to the Morning Lord. You mean like a one who can't find a door? Thanks. <laughs> oh, my oh, Lord, Lord, please give me. As a food. bard, you would definitely know uh, Lathander. There, there are many bards that would worship him as the god of creativity. Okay. Quick permission to post in the chat, yes, please. It's a blob. So. A blob. <laughs> there it is. A blurb. A blob of uh, just quickly, blob though, uh, Lathander is the Lina god of the spring, birth, and mm-hmm. renewal, a deity of conception, vitality, youth, renewal, and self-perfection. Mm. He is a god not of the sun, but of the dawn, which represents the start of a new day, new day, filled with potential. The rest, I'll leave there. Mm-hmm. All right. Lulu, shall we pray? Oh, yes. And I and I do as well. All right. Um, make a religion check with advantage. Who, do you me? wish to do uh, uh, Persephone uh, Falcon? Do you wish to give guidance? Absolutely, I do. Why don't you do that? All right. So Ooh, yeah, I, I, I wish it was you. You are. Rolling. Yeah. So do what we all what if we're praying we get to roll with advantage, do we? Oh, I got a dirty twenty. A nice. Dirty and 20. you need to add a D4 to that. But... Amazing. Ah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, now I got a 21. Ah! <laughs> Good guidance. As you are praying, um, uh, everything begins to fade. The darkness and gloominess of Elturel in hell is consumed by white light, almost as the aurora of a sun crests over the darkness, over the horizon of El Terrell, shining through what remains of this stained glass window and bathing you in beautiful, sparkling, colored light. Lulu begins to fly very excitedly around. And those of you who are aware of such things are become humbled. There is a divine presence somehow, miraculously, shining from somewhere and focusing on Persephone. And there is a voice in your head. You are a musician. Yes. See what music you can make with this. And appearing before you is a gorgeous rapier. I do that in front of that god. <laughs> <laughs> and the light fades. I, I gonna, squee. <laughs> I was say, Jax was going to pray for some food. <laughs> A sausage falls in your hand. I'm going to do this every day. Uh, and then just on that note, we've just been donated 2,000 bits by Rico. Whoa, oh my god. Whoa, what? Uh, so, thousand bits. Rico, so, Rico and Sean, Rico and Sean mm -hmm. will get together and create an NPC for next week's episode. Oh, fantastic! That's cool. Rico, awesome. thank you very much, Rico. Rico. And it can't be named the one she. Oh, look at that thing! This rapier has a beautiful wrap, a blue leather wrapped hilt, and in the center of the hilt is a gleams a enormous blue sapphire. And the uh, filigree around it has a greenish tinge, which fades into bronze and then into gold and finally ends in silver. And the blade itself is black. I love it so much, I don't even care about my shield anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you so pick it up? Oh, yeah. You touch it. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Did no. you say hello? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm this like, is... oh, I'm so excited you talk, but also a little bit scared. Um, this is Does a new it, experience like, for me too. So, yes, you're hearing oh, it in your head. So, well, sorry, what did it say? This is a new experience for me. My God, you are gorgeous. Wow, I really love this sword. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Who who are you? Oh, uh, that is an interesting question. I I feel like my name must have been very important at one point. <laughs> very important. Probably very long. But I cannot remember it. Yeah. It seems I am a sword. All right. Are you to be my wielder? It looks like it. Well, then I think it is only fitting that you bestow a name. Oh, I can't do that so quickly. Would you be willing to let me get to know you a little bit? And then... uh, of course. Of course. In fact, I am very pleased that you wish to put some time into thought. Um, please, a very elaborate and impressive name. I feel like that is very important. All right. Just I'll think long. of one. It's just not too long. Can you do anything else besides talk and be an amazing sword? Um, well, um... <laughs> Just reading Manx well. I feel like at one point the answer to that question was yes, but <laughs> now those are literally the two things I can do. I can talk and be an amazing son. I just want right. to add that Manx put in chat a name so long, <laughs> even the wind yawns. 
<laughs> um, uh, can you see the abilities that it has? Uh, in in my in my very limited capacity on roll twenty on my iPad, I cannot. Oh, this okay, is a yeah. plus two sentient rapier. Has the following abilities: three times a day. Please allow me. As a reaction, you add your proficiency <laughs> modifier to your AC. Three times a day. That's awesome. One time a day. Taunt of inspiration. Your AC score cannot be below 25 for the next round. As an action, you can force an enemy to succeed on a DC 15 insight check or have disadvantage on any attack it makes on a creature other than yourself. This counts as enchantment magic. Is it an action to activate that? It is an action to activate that. Mm. Well, that... Plus two rapier. Is tits, yes. And it talks! (laughs) (laughs) Now, Sean, is this a is this a like a, a, another Anderson original or? Um, yes, in all respects. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. That's awesome, man. Um, and right cool. now, it's named Rapier of the Swashbuckler, but you need to give it a name. Oh, I, I'm putting some serious thought into that. Very mm-hmm. good. Ponce de Leon. I was you are, thinking, it, it requires I was coming in, up re- with a pun version of that name. It requires <laughs> it requires attunement, but you have instantly attuned to it by touching it. Wow, awesome. And it is yours and no one else's. Okay. Yay, Persephone! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> so much. It's so pretty. <laughs> oh. Um, so where are we? Hell. Don't tell him. I feel like I was someplace just like that. <laughs> not too long ago. Well, then you are not a lucky sword. Oh, I believe you will find that that is a, not true. I mean, I found my way to you. That's true. I, I certainly feel lucky. Well, so uh, do I. I think we're going to get along very well, sword. <laughs> Me too. This will be the start of my first friendship. <laughs> <laughs> All of this happens in the blink of an eye. The rest of you see a light beam that is glorious that shoots through the uh, stained glass for a brief instant and then is gone so fast that you might have imagined it. Um, but you see Persephone kneeling there holding this amazing rapier. And Jax has and, his amazing and, sausage. Um, uh, <laughs> Jax has his sausage. <laughs> and Lulu wow. does. Lulu starts doing flips in the air. Oh, oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy. And she comes spinning down, spins around you, spins around all of you. Could not be happier. Gods be praised. They do tend to intervene in the most curious ways. Oh, I'm my. going to pray so much more often than I used to pray. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> there is a <laughs> from outside from where you're staying back towards the front of the chapel who has defiled this holy place Uh, Show yourselves. You come around the corner and uh see... Hmm. A very impressive man. He stands about six foot three. He has dark skin, long arms that end in claws. He's garbed in... The parts of the raiment of a priest of Lathander, but they look to have been ripped and torn a bit. And he looks at you. You have destroyed the gods. Demons, no doubt. And he raises his hand as if to attack. And then there's yeah. a sound that comes from within the circular room and he turns to look at it 
and that will be where we end this Ooh. evening's session. Dun, dun, dun. Gideon, Gideon. This is what he looks like. Long black dreadlocks adorned with some um, interesting medallions that have been wrapped around his arms with leather straps and very long lustrous riding boots. Mm -hmm. I approve. Yeah. Took those from the swashbuckler. Mm -hmm. Yes, no? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for watching and bearing with us with some of our technical difficulties, but... uh, uh, we had a good time. Hope you did as well. 